Can everyone hear me? Good morning, Senator Chairman. Good morning, Chair. Good, morning. Good morning, sir. Uh, sorry for being late. I was uh, I underestimated the number of cars traveling today. I thought it was a uh, uh, easy breeze from Valenciana, but uh, about 45 minutes. We're still waiting for a few more people to join us. So we'll start promptly in about five minutes. All right. Further. And uh, before I recognize our committee secretary, let me uh, acknowledge the presence, the virtual presence of Senator Nancy Binay and Senator Marcos. Hi, good morning. Morning, morning, Senator. Good morning. I, now good morning. I now recognize our committee secretary to uh, acknowledge our resource persons for today. <coughs>
Good morning. I would like to acknowledge our guests and resource persons for today's public hearing. From the DOE, Attorney Leonilo Polido III and Attorney Rino Abad. From the uh, Department of Interior and Local Government, Ms. Annalisa Bonaagua. From the uh, Department of Public Works and Highways, Mr. Tarosa, Mark Charles Tarosa. From the Department of Environment and Natural Resources, Ms. Fatima Milan. From the Department of Transportation, Under Secretary Ruben Reynoso Jr. From the Philippine National Police, uh, Police General Emmanuel Luis Lico. From the uh, Philippine Competition Commission, Attorney Faye Condes de Sagon. From the Metro Manila Development Authority, Mr. Jose Reynaldo Lunas. From the Liquefied Petroleum Gas Marketers Association, Mr. Arnelti, the President. From the LPG Refillers Association, Mr. Bernie Bolisay. From the LPG Industry Association, Ms. Mercedita Pastrana. From the Philippine Institute of Petroleum, Mr. Librando Villamayor. Everyone has been acknowledged, Mr. Chi. Thank you. Thank you, Comsec. And um, happy, uh, 14th, ha happy 14th anniversary to this bill. Uh, 14th dahil uh, since 2006, ito po yung first time na final po itong bill na ito. And thereafter, there were 19 bills, 19 separate LPG bills that were uh, filed. So virtually every year, there's one LPG bill uh, that is being filed, and this started in the 13th Congress. Uh, I believe kami ni, uh, Senator Amy Marcos were colleagues during the 12th Congress. So ganun na katagal ho tong, uh, LPG bill. It's been there for 14 years already. I think baka high school pa ho si Congressman Arnel T nung final po itong bill na ito. But uh, nevertheless, um, uh, even though... Um, Almost every year since 2006, there is uh, an LPG bill being filed. Uh, hindi po na-approve itong LPG bill na fina-file po sa Kongreso at sa Senado. And um, LPG is a, I would say, a lesser known uh, fuel uh, being used in our country. Nevertheless, one of the most important fuel source uh, for our country. Important because there are about 8.6 million households that uh, uses LPG for cooking, uh, even for lighting, even for other things. And there are about 144,000 um, business establishments that still use LPG for their businesses. Uh, I know for a fact that uh, a lot of the tourism, a lot of the restaurants, <clears throat> a lot of the small and medium enterprises in the provinces still use LPG uh, as a as a means to cook and as a means to go by their business. Um, LPG is also a growing um, fuel source. Uh, for the last uh, 10 years, uh, LPG has been growing about 5.9%. So even though it's lesser known, even though it's not as uh, uh, well known as its uh, cousin, the, um, the LNG, the liquefied natural gas, but uh, LNG in our country continues to grow and continues to become a very important uh, fuel source and important commodity in our country. Uh, having said that, um, over the past few years, um, different departments have issued 13 different issuances that govern, regulate, and promote LPG. And this uh, 13 different issuances is scattered all over different departments. Uh, primarily the Department of Energy, Department of Transportation, Department of environment and natural resources, and et cetera. So nakakalat po itong mga issuances. At over the years, it's been uh, uh, it's being updated, being um, revised. But uh, today, our goal is to come up with a one unified LPG bill that will be the ultimate uh, regulatory, ultimate uh, promoting bill that will govern the entire LPG industry. And um, hopefully, we will, uh, with this, legislation hopefully we will fill in the uh, regulatory gaps that uh, are being experienced by our industry players 
And most of all, what's important is to strengthen the various uh, regulation issued already by government. So with that, um, once again, thank you very much for your time and uh, uh, making time to join us in this uh, hybrid meeting. Hybrid meaning uh, those who want to come here and participate physically, you're welcome to do so. But uh, those who want to participate through online or through virtual, uh, they're also very welcome to do so. Uh, with that, I would like to ask uh, Senator Binay, Senator Marcos, if they have any opening speeches. Senator Binay? Senator Binay, you're recognized. Now we can proceed, Mr. Chair. Senator Marcos? No, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Let's proceed. Thank you, thank you Senators. Uh, I do admit that uh, even though LPG has been with us for more than uh, for for many many decades, uh, as an industry itself, uh, my knowledge on LPG is quite shallow. So uh, today is a learning process for most of us, um, especially for me. So we invited industry players, industry association, as well as the Department of Energy and other stakeholders to shed light on the industry. Um, this bill is a work in progress. We still want to improve it, uh, take into consideration um, other uh, innovations such as bio LPG. Uh, bio LPG is now uh, a growing industry within the realm of LPG. So we want to take into consideration the different innovation that is happening around the world. Uh, with that, we start off with our government agencies and we want to uh, hear the comments of the DOE uh, represented by uh, uh, ASEC uh, Pulido. ASEC? Uh, good morning, Mr. Chair. Uh, we'd like to give a short presentation, Mr. Chair, uh, regarding the LPG regulatory framework. We'll discuss the LPG price buildup, uh, the LPG demand, uh, the inspection results for the uh, previous fiscal year, and the challenges that we're facing. Uh, Mr. Chair, I'd like to turn it over to our Director of the Oil Industry Management Bureau, Director Abad. Go ahead, Director Reno. Asak Polido, go ahead. Uh, Director Reno, naka mute kayo. Yan, naka unmute na kayo. Okay, thank you, sir. Yes. Sir, may I, Mrs. Chair, may I proceed with the presentation? Yes, please, go ahead. Okay. Uh, we would like to start the discussion on the LPG regulatory framework. Uh, these are the list of uh, more or less the working regulations that we have and being applied uh, or sort of uh, uh, rules we apply on a daily basis. Uh, of course, uh, we still follow the downstream oil industry, uh, the Regulation Act of 1998. Uh, basically, on this is on the the pricing uh, issue uh, and uh, non-interference with the doing of business with of, of the oil companies. But basically, uh, the uh, area of uh, safety of operation, safety of quality of petroleum products and of course the code of safety practice remains even if there is now a downstream oil deregulation law. Uh, so yung po ang natira. Uh, and we have uh, BP33. Uh, this is a uh, corollary to the oil deregulation law. This, is, this law still exists. Uh, this particular, particular law uh, uh, points to the uh, prohibited acts basically. Uh, in doing the business, uh, one of such, uh, uh, for example, uh, known uh, prohibited access, the illegal trading, for example. So 
this is the law governing that, the basic law. Uh, and this has been uh, uh, implemented through the succeeding uh, industry uh, rules and regulations. We also have existing uh, MOUs. Uh, for example, yung, uh, with our DOA DTI LPG cylinder quality standards, uh, and this has uh, even uh, uh, expanded into uh, what we call the creation of the technical committee. So we have an existing technical committee now that uh, deals uh, not only with the cylinder quality standards, but also with uh, the product quality, including the facility standard, and of course, the code of safety practice. Uh, we have also an existing uh, MOU with DILG uh, in support of the DU resolutions orders. Uh, this has graduated also in the past years into uh, local ordinances. So we now see uh, local ordinances at the uh, LGU level uh, dealing with the uh, regulations of the uh, business uh, involving LPG. Now we have also uh, 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 an existing regulation on uh, ownership and obligations related thereto. Uh, this actually uh, pertains to the uh, the trademark uh, brand uh, uh, markings that would basically appear on a cylinder, which would uh, presumably tells us uh, who is the owner of that. Uh, uh, cylinder until or unless uh, proven otherwise. And then we have the existing special uh, specific rules on auto LPG. Uh, this is uh, about uh, the use of LPG for fuel uh, on motor vehicles. So uh, we have issued specific uh, rules for that. Uh, now we have also uh, an existing circular on the re release and disposal of impounded LPG in cylinders. Uh, we have an existing uh, improvements on this uh, circular. It's now uh, due for signing of the secretary because if you notice the the coverage of this uh, impounded uh, disposal of impounded uh, materials related to LPG, it's, it only mentioned of cylinders. Now we have uh, Im uh, improved this one because it's not only the cylinders that that we. Uh, confiscate, but also the associated equipments, the ancillary equipments related thereto in, in the cylinder. For example, the vehicles used, the parapernalias, the equipments that uh, that uh, provides for the facility for uh, a, a player to refill, for example. So we have expanded that to include all related equipments, and that is due for the signature of the secretary. Now, we have also uh, uh, a, a joint administrative order for the rules on the transport of LPG in cylinders. Uh, uh, this was uh, uh, approved in 2018. We're supposed to uh, come up now with a, a, a joint, uh, more or less, orientation with the involved uh, agencies, the, namely the ILG, the OTR, MMDA. So uh, this is this is corollary to an existing circular also, uh, which uh, which provides for the transport standards uh, of design. So uh, this one is more or less uh, 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 supplemental to that uh, standards because when we set the standards, it has to be implemented on the ground. So this one supports the implementation of such standards on the ground, on the on the road. So we have uh, the, uh, the latest, uh, the two latest uh, issue ones uh, from the BP33, uh, it graduated into what we call now the industry rules. This this, this is now the, 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 in, uh, the new, the revised rules uh, coming, coming from the implementing rules of BP33 and uh, oil direct law. So, uh, what we did here is to uh, issue a specific rules that specifically deals only with the LPG. So we have this uh, LPG industry, the industry rules that uh, uh, regulates uh, from uh, a depot, refilling plant, uh, uh, marketer, uh, 
uh, down to the dealer and retail, retail outlets. Now, the latest one is the issuance on the markings for small size, the so-called 2.7 kilogram LPG cylinder, uh, mainly because uh, uh, most of these cylinder, uh, Mr. Chair, are uh, for outside use. It's not supposed to be used inside the house uh, because of the absence, basically, of uh, the safety feature, uh, which is the, the, the use of uh, uh, the color, uh, the regulator. So th there is an absence of those safety feature. That's why uh, we need to emphasize that uh, the markings should be stated there to include that this is only for outside use. Now, there is a move uh, from the LPG industry uh, players that uh, they will now compensate uh, the 2.7 kJ LPG cylinder to include the, the features that are present in the 11, that what we see in 11 kJ, the valve uh, coupled with the regulators, coupled with the hose uh, for, uh, uh, for so, so regulators can function uh, and uh, well, the intent is on both ways. They, they 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 will be used now even inside the house. But that is uh, still an ongoing uh, um, ongoing uh, effort that that is now uh, being discussed in the technical committee. The the second part is uh, uh, a snapshot of what's happening with the LPG price. Uh, well, we have uh, this uh, we based on the request from us uh, of the secretariat, uh, we were asked to uh, at least unbundle the, the price so it can be explained uh, a little bit uh, uh, in details. Now, we use what we call the contract price. So th this is issued by Saudi Aramco, and we use the average freight, which is uh, at $2 per uh, barrels. Uh, and for, since this is in metric ton, we just have to multiply that with uh, uh, 11.4. So we get to what we call the 22.80. Now we have observed that the contract price uh, way back March 2020 is uh, hovering around 465 US dollar per metric ton. Now it went down by the month of April by half, by almost half of that. But immediately, if you've noticed in May 20, uh, it it drastically also increased, but not that uh, that high uh, as compared to March. But uh, we're seeing that it's it's going up, and uh, uh, it has to be emphasized that this contract price is only issued uh, monthly, uh, and thus there is a, an agreement more or less. It's not written, but it's a, an agreement that based on the issue ones, and this is the price index, uh, the adjustment will be made monthly. So well, the result of the contract price, the import cost, in other words, plus the freight would be the cost and freight. And then we have an ocean loss, which is an industry industry standard of 0.5%. So we get uh, of the CIF. So we have that computation and then we get to the landed cost. And we that since it's in US dollar, we, go, we multiply that into an exchange rate available for an average of the monthly average from the Banco Central, and then we end up with the landed cost uh, in Philippine peso uh, per metric ton. And then we just divide it by 1,000. We get to, which is the, the, the important one, which is the price per kilogram. So uh, at this point in time, uh, you would see uh, that from March at 62 peso per kilogram, common price, uh, it went down by almost 10 peso pesos by April, but more or less it recovered around 57.46. So this is now the existing uh, more or less common price per kilogram of LPG uh, as of this month. Uh, and then we will be seeing a change or an adjustment again by June 1. So, so that's uh, the LPG price build up. Now to emphasize the how the LPG adjustment build up, the, the, the Previous slide speak of the price per kilogram. Now, uh, because of the DOE is also monitoring uh, how the oil companies are uh, doing the adjustment, meaning 
uh, from 51 to 57, for example, from 62 to 51.66. We have monitored, we have a, 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 a corollary or a supplemental buildup that we would like to, to show the, the committee. And now you can see that uh, uh, the change, the, there's the, def, the DOE estimated adjustment uh, at the at the variance that the, the the column for the variance uh, mm -hmm. and that uh, more or less uh, approximates the actual adjustment. Now it's understandable that we cannot really pinpoint exactly the adjustment to oil companies. We have a deregulated regime for the price, but you can see the trend that uh, more or less uh, uh, we are uh, more or less uh, 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 at the same trend in other words if it's it's an increase in january 20 january 20 2020 we have su three succeeding months of decreases and we have of course an increase in may 20 as i've said it increased in may in may as as more or less as uh not necessarily as high as april but it increased a lot in may uh, so uh this is uh, this shows that uh based on the trends and the approximation of the amount, more or less the oil company are implementing uh, consistently of what's happening with the international market. Now, in, in this case, we have just highlighted uh, a three-year period of how uh, the demand for, for LPG is uh, uh, showing us. Uh, as of 2019, for example, the, the Philippines is now consuming around 20, a uh, million barrels that is equivalent to around 1.8 uh, billion liters uh, uh, and uh, uh, most of the I, I think 36 percent of that for 2019 goes to the household uh, transport is uh, it's very small now and we have the industrial commercial of 22.79 percent now the independent refillers are, are are also reselling this 40.54 percent. They are actually reselling it to the three above. So if we just uh, assume that the percentages are will be used for the household transport and industrial commercial, then we will we will see that the independent refiller will will add more to the 36 percent to the 20.26 percent and the 22.79 percent of the above three. Uh, users. So, so the independent refillers are a reseller in the end, later on. They will just add up to the three uh, uh, trade demand above. Now, if we look at the, the individual uh, uh, seller uh, in terms of the market share, we could uh, identify a few primary uh, players uh, basically uh, we have petron uh, isla gas phoenix price gases liquid gas and of course the eastern petroleum so these are more or less the the players that uh, that are basically performing the primary supply in the philippines in other words these are the companies that are in the bulk supply so uh, those are the percentages for them uh, mainly on the household, it's really Petron, but on the uh, transport, I think uh, the shares are now given to Phoenix and Liquid Gas. On the industrial, we have Petron, but uh, uh, running in the second is Price Gas, and in the independent refillers, uh, it's Liquid Gas. So in other words, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, uh, in in the four uh, trade demands, uh, we see the so-called competition in action. So it's not being monopolized by Petron, uh, but rather uh, there are now direct importers like liquid gas, uh, price gas that also competes with Petron. Uh, now this is uh, uh, in terms of how uh, they are classified. Uh, Petron Shell performs as refiners, uh, but direct importers are the five other uh, players. We have uh, Eastern Petroleum. When you, when you say uh, Eastern Petroleum, 
uh, others. Uh, this is a, a bulk supply, but only, uh, but does not import, but only buys from the importer. And we have, of course, a very big uh, end user that we have to emphasize, which is the JG Summit. Uh, it occupies, it directly imports, but only as an, an end user. And we have by island group, we, we, we tried to just uh, limit the presentation to what is what are essentials. Uh, if you see the, the NCR occupies still the, the largest uh, in terms of the demand. Uh, we have North and South Luzon following through, and then Visayas, uh, half of, more, almost half of the South Luzon and North Luzon at more or less 11 to 10% of of the demand. Now, on the inspection reports for 2019, uh, there are two, uh, in the checklist of the DOE, there are two layers. First, on the facility. So, uh, most of the violations of the 912 inspected facilities in 2019, uh, almost half of that is with violation, uh, even more. Uh, more than half of the of the of the 912 faci facilities are with violations, ranging from the without SCC, uh, failure to post SCC, uh, transacting business to players without PCC, and then we have some cases uh, refusal for in of inspection. We also have uh, uh, cylinders that do not conform with PNS. We have uh, one case of illegal refilling. Uh, we have a uh, non-refillable container uh, in position of the so-called uh, uh, one-time uh, use container. And we have failure to comply with PNS, uh, illegal position of uh, or inappropriate LPG cylinder seal. And we have even, even to the extent of uh, the weighing scale, they don't have sometimes weighing scale. And then we also have even the basic uh, requirements of price, price display board. So all in all, these are the, the usual violation of the facility when, when we conduct inspection. And this has been uh, proven in the inspection reports of 2019. Now the other layer is on specifically on the cylinder. Uh, in, in, in the case of the cylinder uh, uh, with violations, uh, the number of cylinders more or less uh, is around 20% uh, more or less of, of the 4,437 inspected cylinders. And the violations range from uh, illegal refilling, unbranded, uh, without serial number, uh, without seal, Without tear weight markings, uh, incorrect tear weight markings, we have underfilling of cylinders. Uh, to the extent even that we have tampered LPG cylinders. In other words, uh, these are uh, cylinders that uh, that uh, 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 the, the, does not uh, usually does not uh, uh, comply with the seal. We have LPG single trip non-refillable canisters that, that were confiscated also. And um, um, the, the, the rest of the column showed uh, the results of the cases referred to our legal services um, uh, with a penalty collected. Now, despite all efforts, uh, there's still much to be desired. Uh, regulatory powers, uh, need for enhancement of the support of the LGUs. Um, uh, there are cases, Mr. Chair, that uh, uh, even if uh, the uh, the facility is uh, not given an SCC and yet they are able to get a uh, business permit, we have written uh, uh, LGUs with the uh, list of those with violations and with cancelled SECs, but uh, still uh, uh, the action is uh, not uh, uh, 
after without uh, the so-called standard certificate of compliance. Uh, we are also gearing towards uh, improving the regulation by delineating uh, exactly the specific standards from the PNS uh, and and in incorporate them to the to the LPG industry rules. Uh, what is uh, what is lacking now is really the delineation of those standards because the, the standards is a Philippine national standard it includes different uh, agencies and uh, DU is just one of them and we need to identify in other words what are the standards uh, provided for as provisions specific provisions in S that will be uh, applicable only or within the jurisdiction only of the DOE because the there are other agencies like Bureau of Fire, uh, DTI. Um, we also have the uh, Bureau of Product Standards. So we need to identify those standards that, that actually belong to, to the DOE. Uh, at this point in time, what we uh, provided for in the regulation is just an, a, a provision saying that it should comply with the PNS. Now, the, the question always goes back what sort of provisions in the PNS would we implement in the DOE? So we're gearing towards that and we're trying to accomplish that uh, with the help of the LPG industry players. Need for additional manpower support of the DOE legal services to tackle sufficiently the numerous inspection results. Uh, uh, in the law, uh, Mr. Chair, there's a mention of the conduct of hearing, which is actually uh, uh, a requirement of the due process. Now, if but but the problem of that, if you don't have the uh, sufficient manpower of the DOE legal service, I think uh, the manpower now, Mr. Chair, allocated to us is is around five five uh, legal personnel for the downstream oil, uh, and if we have to go for the number of inspections that, that we accomplished, like for example, the nine hundred twelve facilities that we have inspected, uh, you can just imagine how the five legal personnel would tackle a 912 uh, inspections, facility inspections in a year. So that uh, that would entail, it, and it will even be more difficult if we now go for the requirement of uh, hearing. So all the more that we need, uh, we need to assess the need for the additional manpower. Now, uh, in the end, the cooperation also of industry players uh, to follow the rules. Uh, this is the so-called uh, self-regulation. Uh, 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 the, the government cannot do this alone, uh, and we need the support of the industry players. Uh, and uh, I think the industry players understand that the DOE cannot do it alone, and uh, seen the, the need for them to... Uh, uh, support in terms of the improvement of the regulation, including the discipline of their own uh, branches and their own facility, even their own personnel. Now, uh, what we are also pursuing is the public understanding and, and appreciation. Uh, um, we keep on doing IECs uh, precisely to uh, uh, pursue the uh, understanding of the safety safety side of how you use the LPG. It's not merely using the LPG, but it has to be coupled with the with the safety of how you use the LPG. So we keep on doing that, and uh, well, we will be uh, uh, encountering challenges now that we have we have this uh, COVID issue, but uh, we will uh, more or less. Uh, uh, be doing some initiatives uh, following the D Department of Health uh, protocols on how to still conduct uh, inspection, actual in inspection and IECs. Now, now, just to emphasize, Mr. Chair, on the last slide, this is, this is the number of players that uh, I think uh, uh, that has to be mentioned. Uh, we only two, have two refiners, importers, six refi refillers 111 but as you go down it 
it becomes very large in numbers, like the retail outlets, more than 15,000, dealers, more than 2,000. And auto LPG, uh, we have 37 for Luzon. So uh, uh, this is the sort of uh, uh, not only the regulation, but also the, the capacity also of, uh, of the government to, to absorb uh, the, the so-called regulations when you are faced with these uh, numbers of uh, players. Uh, Mr. Chair, with the, the, with the uh, remaining time, I would like, uh, we will be welcoming the, the additional inquiries of the chair and the uh, other uh, members of the Energy Committee. Thank you, thank you, uh, Director Rino. Um, any any questions from the senators? We'll uh, proceed. I have some questions to uh, DOE, although to uh, get a complete picture uh, of the industry, I would like to proceed with the presentation of the stakeholders because the stakeholders will know best what's happening in their industry. And uh, I also want to hear suggestions from them on, on how to strengthen the bill and strengthen the industry as a whole. With that, uh, I would like to proceed and call uh, Mr. Arnel T, former Congressman Ar Arnel T of the Liquefied Petroleum Gas Marketers Association. And uh, I would like to apologize to Arnel for uh, um, for the last minute invitation. No? Uh, holy man, but uh, of course, hindi pa rin uh, nakalimutan. And uh, si Arnel has been a very active uh, member of Congress when he was represented representing LPGMA, and in fact, uh, his work with the LPG industry is well uh, established. And uh, we want to recognize uh, uh, former Congressman Arnel uh, for his briefing and also for his comments. Maraming salami, Mr. Chair, and to all our uh, senators present, Senator Jaime and Senator Nancy. And uh, also to our fellow uh, LPG uh, players and uh, to the Department of Energy, PNP, and DDI, and also to the PCC. Uh, well, uh, my comment on the said bill is, pagayang uh, ang nasabi ni Mr. Chair, that uh, this uh, bill has been uh, in the House of Representatives and in the Senate for too long now. Uh, during my stint in Congress on my first term, nagdebudon ng bill so ngayon uh, may nagkakaroon na ng marapit na maging senior itong bill na to and hopefully uh, with uh, with the uh, chairman uh, uh, win uh, senator win uh, maging patas na po ito uh, in the in my comment uh, uh, like the DOE uh, uh, briefing uh, Tama po ang DOE, um, there are a lot of players in the industry and uh, very few uh, uh, employees of DOE monitoring our industry. Uh, while um, LPG uh, uh, is one of um, the product in the oil industry that uh, performs well in terms of uh, uh, consumption and in terms of contribution to the taxes the government. Uh, ito po yung uh, hindi po napaglaanan ng enough uh, fund pondo para po uh, lalo pong mapagtipa yung uh, yung uh, kasipagan ng Department of Energy sa kagustuhan nilang mamonitor po ang ating industriya. Uh, in this uh, crisis right now, uh, pagpapansinin po natin, uh, all, almost all industries umaba po ang kanilang uh, contribution in terms of taxes and in terms of business. Uh, even in the fuel industry, you can see on the white product that uh, uh, maybe in the succeeding quarters, you can see that the drastic drop in demand of, uh, the, of the industry. But LPG uh, continues uh, to have a, uh, a better performance than the rest of any industry. Um, kung ang uh, LPG ngayon on my monitoring, it is uh, down by maybe 20% because of the industrial commercial demand, malls and other and other industrial use ay uh, gumaba. Pero household continues to 
perform dahil sa ganitong crisis, ang pagluluto na lang ang naging libangan ng ating mga uh, consumer. Kaya po, na-compensate po yung nawala sa industrial commercial uh, account at uh, nailipat po sa household. And um, also, the contribution of uh, taxes for LPG ay hindi po bumaba. Uh, in our monitoring, uh, the industry contributed during 2019 around 25 billion in terms of the VAT excise tax. And this year, with the projection increase supposed to be, but uh, I doubt that uh, it will have a double digit uh, performance. In the past seven years, we experienced a, uh, a almost double digit uh, increase year by year in terms of LPG demand in the Philippines. That only shows that uh, the economy po natin is continuously growing because uh, in any areas that you can compare if the economy is growing, is makikita po ninyo yung consumption po ng LPG ay tumataas din. So, on the said bill, uh, ang amin lang pong uh, gusto sanang maikontribute dito is uh, to uh, hopefully to uh, to maintain or to lessen yung government uh, 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 tawag ito, permitting or yung pag-i-issue po ng permits in the in the side of the government because we are deregulated that means that uh, uh, the players in the industry will be policing their own and uh, it, it we we prove it in the past so many years from probably the time that we start to hear this bill 2006 2006 uh, to the present uh, malaki po yung naging improvement ng uh, cylinder quality in the industry but of course we need to have uh, more uh, active role as a uh, industry player. Uh, ang, ang isa lang po ang amin na po nasa bill and we can uh, send our formal uh, uh, reply or comment on this bill. But yun lang po sigurong sa uh, 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 license to operate. If this is the same SEC uh, that the DOE is doing right now, uh, yun lang po sigurong comment namin dito yung before the start of the construction that it needs to have an SCC. Probably we can uh, uh, look it over and discuss it on a PWG if uh, the committee will be creating a PWG. Because uh, the industry right now is uh, is applying for a permit to operate to different uh, government agencies like BNR before we construct the, the facility, uh, the Dolan, uh, which is for the pressure vessels or permit to operate, and also to the local government units, which is uh, involved the barangay and uh, building officials. These are are the agencies that are issuing us different permit to operate before we can start the construction. And of course, after the construction, uh, there will be uh, the conveyance and also the permit to. Uh, uh, to to start the operation, a lot of permit also needs to be uh, to be uh, get. To, we have to get from the different uh, government agencies, and uh, also uh, we just want to emphasize that uh, this bill will be successful if uh, also we can protect the interests of the consumers by way of uh, number one. Uh, our comment is. Uh, if we can focus on the cylinder exchange and swapping to have uh, uh, the implementing rules uh, should be immediately uh, uh, drafted and also uh, the right of uh, the consumer to get the refund of the deposit of the cylinder. Uh, and uh, it's already incorporated in this bill, but uh, in so many bills that has been tackled in the past, uh, the only problem always is on the implementing rules and regulations. That been put a delay. So in the end, the bill has uh, been uh, been shelved because of that uh, discussion. Uh, and, uh, because uh, as the bill states in the general provision, we need to uh, protect the interests of our consumer. And that two provisions is very important for our consumer: the cylinder exchange and swapping, so that the consumer can have the right to choose whatever brand he wants to use. And also, 
the return or the fund of the deposit so that the consumer has the ability to acquire or to buy another brand of cylinders that it uses. So, yun po yung uh, amin pong mga pananaw regarding po dito sa ating uh, panukalang batas. And uh, there are some other uh, uh, comments, but uh, it's not the point. Another one is, yun pong uh, uh, on the page 12 of the power and function of the LGU, uh, letter B, uh, section 10, yun pong uh, pag-revoke ng uh, business permit upon the recommendation of the DOE, um, if it's possible that uh, we can include that it should have a judicial uh, 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 resolution or order dahil kung minsan po, gusto lang po naman natin iwasan yung abuso na mag magagawa ng isang uh, ahensya ng gobyerno sa isang pinag-iinitan niyang uh, players in the industry. Uh, yun lamang naman po is uh, additional protection to our uh, players in the industry because under the deregulation law, we are encouraging more players to participate in the industry. And it shows in our draft that the DOE is presenting that how many players now are participating in the call of this deregulation law. That resulted to the lowering of prices of uh, LPG in, uh, in the industry. Uh, so far, uh, yun lamang naman po ang uh, amin pong uh, comment as of now. And we, can, uh, we will be sending our formal uh, uh, comments and positions in the coming days. Thank you po, Mr. Chair, and to all our senators. Yes, Mr. Chair, if I may. Yes, Senator Marcos. Yes, uh, firstly, I have to apologize. I need to sponsor a bill in another committee hearing shortly. But uh, I'd just like to confirm from Arnel, tama ba yung sabi mo na walang experience overall demand reduction sa panahon ng COVID? Pardon po, uh, uh, Madam Senator? Yung, yung sabi mo kasi, Arnel, kanina na um, wala naman na overall reduction kasi nakakompensate ng household and cooking yung uh, commercial usage ng LPG. Tama ba yun? Just confirming. Uh, opo, uh, masyado lang. Maliit po ang naging reduction in terms of demand. Uh, sa amin hong pananaw, uh, it ranges, uh, it will not exceed 20% of the total volume. Uh, kasi po ngayong taon, tumataas po kasi ang demand ng LPG. Maaaring ngayong taon po ay walang pagtaas na magaganap. Uh, so may 20% pa rin. Kasi overall, di ba siya, uh, Chair uh, Sherwin, ang uh, sinabi ng DOE may reduction talaga sa power uh, requirements by 30%. So ibig sabihin yung LPG mas resilient pa dahil sa usage ninyo sa household. Tama po yun dahil ito po ay naging... Uh, uh, basic na pangangailangan po ng ating consumer, kagaya po ng kuryente. Uh, okay, so the other thing, Mr. Chair, uh, I'd just like to manifest my uh, my uh, sense that the, LG, the LPG industry is clearly an over-regulated industry and we need to simplify, perhaps provide a one-stop shop for all these different certificates required from DOE, DTI, in order to operate the DENR for production, Dolinga as an employer, and then uh, all the LGUs, including quasi-judicial powers, sana mahimay na sa wakas ng maigi at masimplify para mabigyan natin ng ease of doing business talaga ang mga nasa LTG. Yun lang po. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, uh... Thank you, Senator Marcos. Um, I have some questions uh, for Arnel, but I'll reserve it later on. And uh, so that will have a full view of the industry. Uh, we call on uh, Mr. Richard Yao of the uh, Philippine Liquefied Petroleum Gas Association. Mr. Yao. Um, yeah, thank you, um, Mr. Thank Chair. You. Go ahead, Paul. Uh, good morning, uh, Committee Chairman Senator Gatchalian, and to the other senators present, and to the members of the committee and other guests. I am uh, Richard Yao, the current VP for the Philippine LPG Association. Um, our president, Mon Quison, would like to be very much to attend this meeting, but unfortunately, he is indisposed right now. Uh, as a backgrounder, our association is composed of members from the different sectors of the LPG industry. We, are member, we have members coming from the LPG transport, hauling sector, 
LPG distributor retailers, and then LPG cylinder manufacturers, as well as importers of LPG cylinders and its ancillary equipment. As I've mentioned, the bill affects us significantly. Uh, on the other hand, we laud the, the efforts of the Senate Committee in pushing for the LPG bill, as it greatly uh, provides consumer protection. But unfortunately, due, could, due to lack of time, we have received this dra draft bill only yesterday, sir. The board has yet to convene and deliberate and craft our own position paper. With due respect, we are requesting ample time to prepare and submit this. Um, categorically, any opinions or comments I may have shared during this meeting are based on my own views and does not really reflect for now the position of the LPG board. So, sir, um, right now we are just being a listener and observer because uh, this will really affect our, our uh, members so that we, we are requesting ample time to submit our position paper. That's our. Uh, that's uh, that's all for uh, for now, sir. Well, definitely, Mr. Mr. Yao, this bill is meant to affect you positively, hopefully, and not negatively, because the the objective of the bill is to uh, uh, fill in the gaps in terms of regulation as well as promotion, and also strengthen some of the uh, government powers that uh, implement this law. But at the same time, we also want to uh, build in a promotion and development uh, feature. Uh, that's why I said earlier, this is a work in progress. This bill is really meant for your industry, you know? not only to regulate, but also to develop. And like what Arnel said earlier, uh, the LPG industry has been growing at a double digit pace. In fact, if you compute for the last 10 years, it's growing at 5%. But if you compute in the last five years, it's growing at double digit. So nevertheless, whether it's five or 10, it's growing. You know? And uh, if you look at the economic activity of our country, we're growing at 6%. LPG is growing at the same rate as our economy. So as our economy grows, LPG consuming consumption grows. And this is a very important uh, phenomenon because LPG re remains a very, impure, very, very important fuel source for our household and for our businesses. In fact, um, JG Summit imports its own LPG uh, that supplies their own factories. No? Ganun kahalaga yung LPG. That's why the objective of the bill is to um, uh, not only to regulate, but also to develop. And uh, I, I want to further emphasize the comment center, Marcos, that we can also build in, in the bill a uh, streamlining and one-stop shop feature. No? Um, uh, if you notice in the hierarchy that was presented by the DOE, and dami talagang players. We're talking about thousands. No? If you add everyone, we're talking about 20,000 plus. And government definitely cannot regulate each and every one of those players. So we need some form of uh, self-regulation, some form of um, uh, collaboration with the private sector, and some form of streamlining so that uh, government will not be overburdened with paperwork. You know? But having said that, the heart and soul of the bill would still be the welfare of our consumers, especially the safety. And I will ask um, DOE about the safety aspect of uh, LPG. You know? But uh, Mr. Yao, we will highly appreciate your position paper. I can see that you're not ready to give comments today, but uh, uh, any, just give us a briefing of the industry, you know, because your association is composed of all you know, the different uh, facets of LPG. Just give us a briefing on where the industry is, where is it going, and what are the gaps that we need to fill in, in order for the industry to be strengthened and to grow further. Now, what we want is a strong growing industry. You know? I don't think in the next 10 years, LPG will disappear, you know, impossible. But what we want is a strong, um, growing industry. And you just give us a briefing from your own personal knowledge. Obviously, you have stock knowledge on this. Nasaan bang LPG industry ngayon? Saan ba dapat pumunta? And ano ba yung mga gaps na dapat natin takpan? Yeah, Senator. So, uh, as mentioned by Senator Marcos, um, the industry right now is uh, 
getting to be over-regulated again. We are in support of the bill, which would simplify everything. Uh, in terms of, for example, the DOTR, which was included right now in the, in the LPG, uh, the draft bill, we feel that uh, we, the DOTR has not yet the technical capability to uh, credit or certify transport. We are able to provide them the, the required guidelines as we have those in, in included in our uh, in our uh, procedures. As I've said, we can we can assist any government agencies, for example, the Bureau of Fire to craft bills or to craft uh, policies that would that would regulate well the industry. We, we understand that this industry is highly uh, progressive. It is growing. But uh, at the same time, we need to instill or create uh, and help the government or the government agencies in crafting standards. Um, right now, we have the transport, we, we as according to our precedent, we have the transport guidelines. We can share to that, uh, to the appropriate government agency. So um, we have the te technical understanding as our president is part of the technical working group of the under the DTI, the Bureau of Product Standards. He is the one heading that committee in crafting the standards. So we have to be cautious in terms of um, um, issuing out or uh, providing uh, police powers to uh, certain government agencies without the technical knowledge. So as I've said, um, we, we feel that the industry is uh, a work in progress and the standards needs to be set in place. So we are for the bill, but for but for now we need to uh, uh, assess in uh, government agencies in providing the technical know-how. Thank you, thank you. Uh, what uh, in 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 very brief uh, in brief? Why did you say that it's overregulated? Can you cite some? Uh, specific examples on why you think the industry is overregulated? Uh, it might be overregulated if the bill would be passed because there are certain other, there's a new other government agencies which are included right now. The, for example, the LTO, the DOTR, which, we've, uh, which before was not included as part of the regulating agencies which would handle the LPG industry. So um, we would like to have a simplified LPG bill that would that would really be uh, be a sort of a one stop shop for for those uh, coming into this LPG industry, or for those who are already existing in it. We would like to comply, but unfortunately, some of those provisions might be overlapping. So we we would like to help assist the government in assisting this uh, uh, draft bill and making sure that we simplify everything. All right, um, Mr. Yeo, um, we will appreciate your very detailed position paper. Uh, definitely the objective of the bill is not to over-regulate. Uh, I don't also agree that there should be zero regulation. There must be some form of regulation because this is a highly flammable um, commodity and uh, we are distributing it all the way to every single household. Like I mentioned earlier, there are 8 million households, half of our households use LPG in their homes for cooking and other purposes. So government needs to have some regulation, no? but I don't agree in over-regulating as well as I don't agree in uh, red tape. No? So uh, we need your detailed position paper being a uh, player in this industry. And uh, like I said, no, this bill is meant to uh, regulate, make sure that the industry uh, is safe for our consumers and as well as develop. You know? um, we want to continue to grow the industry uh, to its full potential. So we would highly appreciate your position paper um, and uh, we will have a technical working group and we will invite you again to um, participate. Yeah. Um, thank you, Mr. Yao. And uh, we also have um, another member of the LPG industry, the LPG Refillers Association, represented by Mr. Uh, Bernie Bolisai. Mr. Bolisai. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Rest of uh, <clears throat> the members of this committee present today. 
Uh, like the other organization, Mr. Chair, uh, I'm so sorry that we're not yet ready with our position paper. But just the same, I just give you a background of uh, what LPG uh, Repeal Association is. LPG Repeal is also a buyer, but uh, well, uh, the only difference between the consumer is a uh, bulk buyer direct from the supplier. And uh, we from the LPG Repeal Association would like to uh, do business uh, the peaceful way. That's why uh, we interpose no objection in the passage of this uh, Senate Bill number 1128, only for uh, many reasons that uh, we do not uh, pass the bill for the last uh, how many years already, because uh, probably came to your attention that LPGRA is one of the uh, association who do object for this bill every Congress. And uh, because of this short notice, I still have uh, some uh, reaction or uh, comments, L Senate Bill number 1128. There must be a separate chapter, Mr. Chair, for the uh, LPG cylinder improvement program, because this has been a, a long problem of the industry. Just for your information, Mr. Uh, Chair, for the last so many Congresses, We've been using the data of 12 million cylinder in circulation. And uh, out of that 12 million, I think the TI or the OE said that there is something like 6 million cylinder which is due for replacement. But how could that be replaced without the proper budget, Mr. Chair? So yan po yung palagi namin sinasabi during the committee hearing that uh, the bill will be successful if there will be an appropriation. So how much do we need? I think we have to ask the number one, if that is the figure that we're going to use, the 6 million cylinder at 1,500, we need at least 9 billion, Mr. Chair. And uh, in the previous bill, in the lower house, I've seen the bill, uh, they're asking for uh, at least 10 billion over a period of five years or two billion per year. So in this way, Mr. Chair, if this will be uh, approved or uh, incorporated in the bill, this will be a successful bill. Because without the appropriation, I don't think this will succeed. Because for your information, Mr. Chair, majority of this uh, cylinder, which is due for replacement, Wala naman po yan sa mga player o ng, or the independent repailer. Nandiyan po yan sa ating mga consumer. And who are those? Our consumer uh, was categorized as A, B, C, and D. Nandun po sa C and D yung mga due for replacement na yan. And who are those? Those are the poor. And the letter D is the poorest of the poor. So wala naman pong pambilian. So I think we have to... Uh, incorporate or uh, isama po natin sa bill na kinakailangan po yung appropriation. Then uh, another thing, Mr. Chair, is the uh, LPG Cylinder Exchange Program. This has been a long time, long, long time problem of the industry that uh, we independent repealer, most of the time, was uh, raided by various agencies of government simply because of illegal repealing and the dealer illegal retailing. Why? Because there is no cylinder exchange program na guidelines clearly para malaman po ng mga player ko ano gagawin simply because, number one, we don't capture nor the uh, multinational capture our cylinder. It's a natural flow in the LPG industry that cylinder goes in and out. At uh, yung pong mga buyer na yan, Kapag pumunta po sa iyo, if we are selling, say for example, X gas, and here comes uh, Sulane gas, sasabihin po ng customer, these are my cylinder, I bought this. So I have all the rights in town kung kanino ko pwede ibili yan. So what's the cylinder? Nakita po sa amin yan, any agency of government, we are already uh, illegal. 
So kinakailangan po, napaka-importante po ng cylinder exchange program na may finalize na. At uh, yung cylinder exchange, kami naman po ay more than willing na i-offer ang aming mga area where to, uh, where to uh, put in the cylinder buffer. Say for example, for the multinational. Ang gagawin lang po namin, once the dealer came in and here comes, uh, say for example, Solen or Islagas, we'll put in there and get to the buffer. Ganun lang po. Gusto po namin magkaroon ng solusyon itong problema ito because ito po ay napakatagal ng problema. At uh, sana po ay uh, yung nga po cylinder exchange program na yan ay uh, magkaroon na ng uh, ng uh, dahil napakatagal na po. So, so far, yun lang po naman ang aming uh, comment for in the meantime simply because we don't have yet our uh, position paper and within the week probably Mr. Chair we will submit our comprehensive uh, position for this uh, thank you very much thank you thank you uh, Mr. Bulisay Mr. Bulisay I have a question no and tong cylinder exchange program can you describe it further well cylinder ang ibig po namin sabihin diyan is a uh, Ang cylinder po kasi is a natural flow in the industry na as a dealer, ang dala mo is uh, one brand. Then here comes a, uh, a buyer na ang dala naman another brand. So, ang gusto po namin, magkaroon ng buffer stock, the multinational, because sila po palagi ang nagpapa-apprehend o nagpapahuli sa amin kapag ka nakikitaan kami ng mga cylinder nila. So, if there is an exchange program for this, say for example, considering that they are manid, they can put in buffer in each region there to exchange the cylinder. Yun po ang ibig ko sabihin, Mr. Chair. Exchange it to... to... To their brand. Well, they will put in buffer. As I will say, for example, LPGRA. Put in cylinder mark LPGRA. Then every time there's a dealer that comes in to our repealing plan, Kukuha lang po kami doon sa LPGRA, we will put in there the, the Isla or the Petron Cylinder. So exchange. So wala po kami violation. Yun, yun lang po ang gusto namin, as simple as that. Itong, uh, itong sinasabi niyo to replace, um, bakit po gobyerno ang magbabayad to replace? Well, uh, hindi ang may-ari ay yung private sector? Uh, ganito po yung kasi. Kaya po namin na, uh, well, uh, to replace is uh, mihingi po ng subsidy from the government is simply because majority of this uh, consumer belongs to the poorest of the poor. Wala naman po silang pambili ng cylinder. I would like to mention, Mr. Chair, that uh, itong ating cylinder program was a uh, pattern in Thailand. In Thailand, there is something like... Um, 1,200,000 cylinder then replaced by the government. Tapos, yan po, ay, uh, on a staggered basis, pinalitan po nila yan, I think, in three years' time. But 100% subsidy. So, ito rin po, ano, ala naman pong perang pambili yung pong ating mga consumer na mga may hirap to replace the cylinder. Hindi naman po yung cylinder belongs to the repeller, no? Majority of that belongs to the consumer. Nando po sa category D and partly C. That is why we're asking for a subsidy from the government in order for this uh, bill successful. Hindi ba ho ang uh, cylinder is owned by the brand owner? No. Uh, in uh, some cases, like the multinational, yan po sinasabi nila. That is why kung... Uh, Na-mention po kangina, uh, considering that they own the brand, they should uh, refund the corresponding amount. Ito po sa independent, wala po, hindi po na, we, we don't own that. It's the consumer's uh, cylinder. Kami po kasi, ang trabaho lang namin, magkarga, to repeal. Almost like the uh, gasoline station, we just repeal. Sige po, we'll, uh, I'll go back to that uh, cylinder owner no? and later on I'll ask DOE about that uh, concept because uh, I know that is a uh, uh, 
uh, some it's a contentious issue among the players but uh, later on well i'll ask the other industry players also let me uh, go now to lpg industry association represented by uh, miss pastrana mercedita pastrana miss pastrana go ahead nakamute po kayo Yan. Good morning, Mr. Chair, and to all members of the committee and other guests from the LPG industry. Yes, Mr. go ahead. Chair? Yes, we can hear yes. you, Pop. Uh, the LPG Industry Association uh, is composed of uh, major uh, players like Petron, Isla, Phoenix, and uh, uh, Brenton which is uh, so composing of different brands and also the federated LPG dealers of its uh, companies. Now, we are fully supported of this, uh, supportive of this bill, which has been pending for the last, uh, I think, uh, Mr. Chair, medyo mas matagal pa po sa pagkakabanggit nyo na 14 years kasi 11 Congress pa po ito nagsimula sa lower house. So, uh, the LPG Industry Association uh, has already submitted all its comment before uh, when you had this uh, hearing, I think, uh, in the previous Congress. But I think there are some uh, further comments or uh, position that we may be able to submit uh, this week uh, with the receipt of uh, some comments also from other players. Uh, clarify ko lang po yung nabanggit kanina ni Sir ni Mr. Bernie Bulisa. I, I think meron pong ano issue doon sa cylinder ownership. Uh, yung association po namin uh, has the same position as the DOE that the cylinder is owned by the brand owner. So I think sabi nyo nga there's a contentious issues about this dahil uh, Ito po yung nagiging dahilan kung bakit uh, nagkakaroon ng uh, disagreement, especially during uh, working uh, technical working groups meeting dahil sa issue ng ownership. Dahil ang, in the, uh, most of the players, especially the, the old players, uh, the, the cylinders are owned by them. That's why it's properly marked. And uh, since 2001, Nagkaroon po ng change sa ating standard, sa Philippine National Standard, na dapat lahat ng cylinders are all stamped with the permanent markings kung sino po yung brand owners. But prior to that, uh, I think yun po yung issue na Mr. Bulisay, may mga cylinders po na generic uh, na dapat yun po yung ma-address. So I think uh, this is the right ano uh, time para ma-address na po yung issue para I think uh, with uh, so many years that uh, so many congresses and uh, draft bills that has been uh, submit a pile for both uh, lower house and the Senate. Sana po uh, this time in your uh, committee uh, finally ma-approve na po sana tong bill na to. And uh, kami, whatever uh, assistance we have been giving the DOE and the DTI for all the assistance that we need uh, for their monitoring and inspection, uh, technical knowledge and everything. So we're willing to help and to assist the government para po magkaroon ng uh, uh, successful LPG bill in case na ma-approve po ito in both houses. Yun lang po. Thank you, um, Ms. Pastrana. Uh, itong um, LPG cylinder, no? uh, I know it's a contentious issue, but uh, itong mga generic, saan ang gagaling po itong mga generic na nasabi nyo? Uh, mara, previous, uh, especially in the 90s and 80s, marami pong imported second-hand cylinders na walang brand. These are all generic. Normally, yung po ang mga imported secondhand from Japan na generic. So everybody buys the cylinders. Sino uh, is, uh, Mga traders po. Importers. That's why dito sa ating uh, without the authority from DTI or without the certificate of uh, 
normally dapat po merong ICC o imported commodity clearance from DTI. But prior to that, ang nag-import ang iba-ibang players, normally uh, in, nine, in the year 2000, may mga coordination meeting kami with the Bureau of Customs. These are imported uh, and declared as scrap for melting. Pero instead of being uh, scrap, branded and iba-iba pa yung brand. Hindi pa siya nakaano kung anong brand. And uh, so many uh, refillers or marketers uh, patronize these second-hand cylinders. And uh, prior to the implementation of the standard requiring mandatory embossing, uh, yung ibang players po, since the start, like uh, say, Pilipina Shell before, Petron Corporation ever since, Sila, may permanent markings na sila sa cylinder, naka-emboss, nakatatak yung kanilang brand. But uh, prior to the implementation of this uh, permanent markings, ang mga cylinders sa Pilipinas, manufactured in the Philippines, even locally manufactured, wala pong permanent markings. Kaya yun po yung naging, ano, nagkaroon ng uh, issues sa uh, circula cylinders in circulation dahil may mga generic cylinders before. So in other words, uh, Ms. Pastrana, itong mga generic unmarked cylinders are either tech... Uh, marami pong cylinders before. Uh, I, I remember we have our reports with the Bureau of Customs in the year late 90s or early 2000. Uh, sa isang taon, uh, around more than 100,000 po yung dumadating noon. But not uh, recently, hindi na ganun kalaki kasi uh, nagbago na din ang uh, standard ng Japan. So instead of 5 years ang life nila, they increase the life of their cylinders ito 10 years. Kasi uh, sa ibang countries, uh, Mr. Chair, may life ang cylinder. So once na, na meet na nila yung life, they are de either declared as scrap or disposal. Ito so yun yung binibili. Itong uh, generic ito mga generic cylinders ba ho? Ano ito? Delicado? Is this, are these dangerous cylinders? Uh, but if they are safe then but are these considered uh, dangerous risky items? Uh, hindi since coming po ito sa different batches of cylinders or different batches kasi you cannot determine kung ano po yung cylinders na nabibili as second hand kung anong taon pa na manufactured or ilang taon nang nagamit so you cannot check unless na subject siya sa uh, testing required as required by uh, Philippine National Standard o yung requalification otherwise kung darating yung cylinders Ibebenta lang po sa consumer o sa retailer o na gagamitin ng marketer, hindi po natin masisigurado na these are safe cylinders. Iyan po yung part nung sinasabi kangina na uh, maraming uh, cylinders in circulation na due for uh, condemnation or scrappage and dapat hindi na po ginagamit. Itong mga generic cylinders, do they pass through government inspection or government standards? Marami sir dito sa generic na to ang uh, hindi dumaan po sa inspection kasi kung susundin po talaga yung inspection natin batch testing ng DTI for uh, cylinder how can you conduct batch testing kung coming from different batches po yung cylinders na to so talagang hindi po siya na test Right, thank you, ma'am. Ma'am, pa-submit na lang ho sa amin yung position paper ho ninyo. Again, no? uh, like the other association, uh, this will have, hopefully, positive impact in your industry. So we want to know in detail what are your recommendations and uh, what are your uh, suggestions to uh, improve the bill further. Yes, Mr. Yeah. Chair, we will submit. All right. Maraming salamat po. Yes, we, I also want to call uh, Philippine Institute for Petroleum, represented by Mr. Ding Willemayor. And then who's he? Uh... Yes. Uh, good morning, uh, Mr. Chair. Yes, and any to all to the attendees of this uh, Senate hearing. Um, Mr. Chair, uh, the 
PIP member companies uh, engage sp specifically those engaged in LPG industry, including uh, Isla Gas and Petron Corporation, support the Senate's passage of legislation developing a policy framework to govern the LPG industry, especially with its aspiration to curb the illegal practices in LPG industry. Um, specifically those that undermines the consumer's protection and uh, safety. Uh, for good or order, Mr. Chair, um, PIP manifests its submission of its official position uh, to contain the comments and recommendations so that hopefully we could improve several provisions of the bill. Uh, hopefully before uh, Friday, Mr. Chair, we were able to submit our official position. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, we also want to call on and ask his opinion, uh, Governor Dax Kua of uh, ULAP. Governor? Governor Dax? Yan po si Governor Dax? Uh, kung wala po, we'll uh, call on him later on. We want to hear from uh, DTI under Secretary Ruth Castello. And uh, DTI plays a very important role in the LPG industry, considering the safety of the cylinders, the standards of the cylinders, all pass through, passes through the hands of DTI. So uh, under Secretary Ruth, any comments for regarding the bill and any comments uh, on the uh, LPG industry? Uh, yes. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Good morning, everyone in this uh, in in this August body. Uh, Mr. Chair, the Department of Trade and Industry fully supports this bill, and um, we would like to think this is that this is going to be the very first that will be uh, that will be promulgated or enacted, if ever. Uh, on the part of DTI, Mr. Chair, we have Philippine national standards for the tank, uh, and of course, we work on this with the Department of Energy as they uh, certify or inspect the content of the tanks that they that are being filled. Um, we include this in our monitoring, Mr. Chair, it's supposed to be included in our monitoring as to the compliance uh, to the Philippine national standards. The manufacturing label should be complete. It should indicate the name of the manufacturer and where it's made. Uh, kung ano po yung mga detalye, the content, specifically the, the volume. Uh, a lot of times, Mr. Chair, it happens that the volume indicated is not the actual volume contained in the container or in the tanks. Uh, so that is included in our inspection. Um, we will have to do more. I will have to say, Mr. Chair, that after uh, this bill, we will have to do more in the inspection, monitoring, and enforcement of any violation that may be committed uh, against consumer protection. Uh, like I said, Mr. Chair, we fully support this bill and we look forward. We're in fact very excited that this, uh, uh, that this bill be enacted and finally promulgated for compliance by everybody in the LPG industry, Mr. Chair. We will submit also our position paper. I understand it's submitted for the for the signature of the secretary, Mr. Chair, but we'll submit it as soon as signed by our secretary. Thank you, thank you, Yusek. Yusek, I, I want to focus on the cylinders now because the DTI plays a very important role when it comes to the safety of the cylinders. Uh, meron ba kayong, uh, I want to know if you have a study on, let's say, how many cylinders out there, how many cylinders are um, estimated or an estimate number of cylinders which are generic or or went through a, an illegal went through a, an illicit manner, uh, and then how many cylinders <clears throat> uh, uh, should be uh, replaced? Uh, do you have this type of information? We have information as to how many cylinders have been certified, Mr. Chair, or how many companies have been certified by the Bureau of Philippine Standards. If I may, Mr. Chair, Director Neil Tahai okay. of the BPS is here. 
he can provide us more information. Yes, Director Neil. Uh, Good morning. Mr. Chair. Yes, go ahead. Uh, Director Neil. Neil. Nice. Uh, uh, Okay. Good, good morning, Chair. Uh, good morning, po sa lahat. Uh, good morning, kay kay Yusek. So, in regards to the ano, to the question on the the volume of LPG circulating in the market, actually, we don't have the exact data. We are certifying the the manufacturers of uh, LPG tank. So, ang dinideklare ho sa amin ay yung volume ng production. But in regards to the actual volume circulating sa market, uh, wala ho kaming data sa ngayon. Uh, Doon sa issue ng uh, generic tank, I don't think that is possible kung meron sa market, dapat yan ay huhulihin kasi hindi pwede yung generic tank. Lahat dapat ng tanke, ng LPG tank na nasa market ay traceable sa specific manufacturer. So yung ni-raise kanina uh, earlier na yung ownership ng tanke ay doon sa consumer. So, hindi ho ganun yung certification scheme natin. So, sa certification scheme, ini-insure natin na yung lahat ng tanke ay traceable doon sa specific manufacturer para in case na magkaroon ng problem later on, so, doon, doon, yung, ano, doon yung responsibility. So, we will try to, ano, we will try to conduct uh, a study siguro, Mr. Chair, so that... Uh, Later on, we, have, we can provide information in regards to the quantity of LPG tank circulating in the market. Pero yon ang dapat na nandiyan sa market ay lahat ng certified LPG tank. So kung meron hong mga uncertified, eh, subject ho yon sa enforcement. Director, that's one of the most important issues no? because we are delivering LPG to the homes of our people through those tanks and uh, the tanks is a highly regulated um, item uh, regulated by DTI through standards and through inspections. But uh, as we all know, um, uh, meron talagang mga illegal tanks at uh, generic tanks na nakapasok at pumapasok sa ating bansa. And these are now in the homes of our constituents. Ngayon, sinasabi nga ni Mr. Bolino, some of them are our poor constituents. Nevertheless, it's in their homes. So, um, my, my, my point here is we have a flammable material inside a canister that is unregulated because it didn't go through any government regulation. And now, it's in the homes of poor constituents. More so, delicado, because our poor constituents will not have field health, will not have the means to uh, recover if there are if there is any accidents that can uh, that will lead to this um, unregulated tax. So, ang question ko lang, uh, meron ba kayong industry analysis on the tanks? Because DTI is supposed to monitor, supposed to uh, make sure that uh, the tanks in the homes of all, no, regardless of your income bracket, uh, is safe. Uh, sa ngayon, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, wala, wala kaming uh, study in regards to those uh, other tanks. Uh, siguro yung isang issue kasi, yung, yung canisters na originally intended dapat na disposable canisters nagiging, ano, nagiging refillable. So isa yan sa mga issue na tinitingnan natin. Hopefully, itong uh, bill natin will address uh, yung specific issues and concerns in regards to, to canisters na ano ba ang, ang dapat na refillable, ano ang dapat na hindi. Though, uh, sa, sa Bureau of Philippine Standards, we are receiving applications. So may mga companies na, na nag-a-apply voluntarily for, for uh, canisters para ito ay ma-certify. So para lang masigurado na, din natin na yung quality ng mga canisters na yon kasi we understand na yun ang mas popular dun sa mga poorest of the poor natin. Kasi mas mura, tingi-tingi na principle. Hindi nila kaya yung regular na 11 uh, kilogram uh, cylinder. So kaya ang nangyayari, uh, dun sila napupunta dun sa, sa tingi-tingi. And kagaya nga nung sabi natin, originally dapat yung mga LPG canisters na yon ay hindi siya refillable. 
So yun ang ang kailangang bantayan uh, doon siguro kailangan uh, mag-conduct ng paitingin ng enforcement sa ngayon and hopefully uh, dito sa bill nga natin ma-address natin yung specific concerns in regards to canisters na uh, ano ba talaga dapat ang applicable na na regulation doon. Pero sa ngayon, uh, pwede ho namin tingnan na yon uh, immediately uh, considering yung risk. So we will be coordinating with uh, DOE. We understand na DOE is very active in regards to monitoring uh, dito sa mga canisters na to. So siguro ano lang, yung more on on enforcement uh, at saka market monitoring pag, pagdating dito sa LPG canisters. Yeah, enforcement kayo yun, di ba? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Yung aming but, Fair Trade and Enforcement Bureau. Oh, but you're saying nagkulang kayo sa enforcement? Uh, yung, yung sa LPG canisters, uh, Mr. Chair, medyo gray area kasi siya. So yun yung gusto nating maklarify sa uh, uh, ano ba ang, ang applicable na, na regulation doon. Kasi nga, ang iba doon, eh, hindi talaga siya originally intended for uh, LPG. So, nire-recycle lang ng ating mga consumers tapos uh, nire-refill. So, doon sa doon sa other sa other regulations natin doon sa refillers, uh, 'yun dapat hindi 'yun refillable. So, 'yun yung mga gray areas ngayon, Mr. Chair, na dapat ma-address. Kasi kung disposable yung ano, disposable yung yung canisters, eh hindi siya dapat dalhin doon sa mga refillers at yung mga uh, refillers ay uh, pumay yag na yun ay lagyan ulit. But Director, um, iba pa yung issue ng canister, iba pa yung issue ng cylinder. And uh, right now, what I'm saying is uh, both of these devices uh, go into the homes of our war constituents. So meaning, um, it's, it's how do we assure our constituents that what they have in their homes are safe for their families? And that's that's a job of the government, no? Being, uh, being LPG, being a very flammable item. So, request ko na lang ho sa inyo is to give me an industry analysis on the cylinders and the canisters. And like you said, no? Trabaho to ng DTI and the Bureau of Standards, eh. And uh, it's about time that we look into this matter uh, very seriously. Hindi ho uh, pwedeng... Um, uh, very superficial lang. Uh, kung nagkulang ng enforcement, umpisahan na ho natin today because um, you know, even though in the absence of the law, we have to make sure that our homes are safe. And alam naman natin na marami talagang nangyayaring accident. May, later on, I'll, I'll show that to the body. Na maraming accident talaga nangyayari dahil po sa LPG. No? Especially dahil po doon sa tinatawag natin generic or or mga lumang LPG cylinders na so submit to us uh, those uh, information uh, one week from now uh, because that is a critical component of this bill. We have to understand uh, the industry of cylinders and canisters and also number of lahat ng data pertaining to those. Uh, okay. Any comments from the Mr. Chair? Yes, uh, Yusek? Yes, Mr. Chair, we thank you for calling our attention. Yes, Mr. Chair, moving forward, we will be more circumspect on this on this issue. Thank you. Thank you, Yusek. I want to hear from uh, the industry players, uh, Congressman Arnel. Yeah, any comment dito sa cylinders and canisters? Uh, I, I, I know yung sinasabi ng uh, Philippine standard is the ideal situation, pero on the ground, uh, iba yung nangyayari. So... Any comment and can you give us what's happening on the ground regarding the uh, cylinders and canisters? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, regarding about the cylinder, uh, first, dun mo ta, dun siguro muna sa, uh, com uh, well, comments or, uh, or uh, informations given by the participants regarding the funding needed to, uh, to augment or to subsidize the industry. Uh, we have discussed it and tackled this during my term. And uh, based on the legal opinion of uh, the House of Representatives, the government cannot fund a private entity, LPG business, and the cylinders that are circulation in the market is owned by a private entity and a private 
person which the government cannot fund it. It will violate our uh, law if uh, the government will uh, be funding it. Uh, now, on the um, uh, way of uh, doing things that can improve the cylinder uh, quality in our industry or in our country, it is the uh, exchange and swapping and uh, recovery program that, that the DOE is proposing ever since. But uh, it should be probably the DOE should lead the way of calling all the industry participants to sit together and agree to a uh, condition or, or an agreement that we have to agree on how to do it. Um, because many industries, like in our case, uh, we treat our cylinder as a sale, but we continue to uh, to uh, claim ownership on the brand. But the cylinder was already removed from our books. Uh, other players, naman, it considered as a deposit. So it means the asset of the cylinder is still in their books, and the deposit is their income. So it's really uh, hard to align the two positions because every time you return a deposit, it incur expense in their books. In our case, when we sell our cylinder, it's an income, it's a sale. And uh, if we buy back our cylinder, then it's an investment. So that's totally different. But the brand, uh, both uh, parties, uh, including the major ones and us, the independent who owns a brand, uh, agrees that the brand will be uh, continuously owned by the brand owner. But of course, the cylinder, because of the embos or the permanent marking is existing in the cylinder. So it includes the cylinder. But of course, in booking the cylinder's value, we have two different uh, way of booking that. That's probably the problem. That's the reason why we continue to have the delay on passing this law because of the provisions of the return of the deposit. Uh, now, on the canister side, uh, it is true that uh, all the, uh, the single uh, refilled canister supposed to be not to be filled with LPG because it's only for butane. LPG is composed of butane and propane. Butane has a lower pressure, while uh, propane has a high pressure. When you mix it, it continues to have a high pressure. That The tin can, which is the single-use uh, canister, cannot sustain that pressure. And it's worse if you refill it. So that's why today, we the DDI, has a, um, maybe they already approved some uh, specs of uh, the canister that is refillable by LPG. These are the aluminum cans and the stainless cans, which is more expensive, but it is refillable and can be used to uh, contain LPG. Um, we are very supportive of the DPI and the DOE. Well, it's supposed to be. It is the DOE who is in charge when the product or the canister or the LPG cylinders is in the market. The DTI uh, only responsibility is on the manufacturing side. Once it's sold to the public, it is the DOE uh, responsibility to monitor and to implement the, the anything uh, law covering the cylinder and the canister. Uh, problem is always during my term, I always seek for the additional budget of DOE. And uh, the DOE, by the way of their uh, report uh, this morning, still uh, still needs additional funds to hire more people and uh, to monitor and to implement uh, the industry, the LPG industry. Ilan lamang po yung comment ko, Mr. Chair. Kung Arnel, do you agree that uh, to exact accountability, uh, the cylinder brand should still be the brand owner should be accountable to their own cylinders yes uh, yeah. that's that should be the case always that the, the brand owner should be accountable because they claim ownership of the of the cylinder that has their brand on it uh, now ang uh, issue lang naman ho dito is uh, the concern of the generic well, the generic can answer. Well, the problem of generic cylinders in circulation can be answered by a uh, cylinder exchange and swapping and recovery. 
there is a proposal already by the DOE, and uh, we have uh, so many meetings during the past. But in the end, uh, the issue of uh, taking responsibility over the last touch of the cylinder or the generic cylinder, kung kanino babagsak ang gastos. But of course, sabi ko nga, I have, I have uh, positioned in the past that um, I don't want to take responsibility over the expenses of that. But in the end, uh, I have uh, changed my mind and uh, it is the right time that uh, the last touch concept kung sino ang huling humawak ng tanke na yan, should be the one responsible responsible to to maintain and to uh, to to have the cost uh, shoulder the cost of the repair and rehabilitation of that city. But uh, kung Arnel, can you give us a preview lang? Ilan ba in your knowledge ang generic versus um, branded cylinders? Well, during the 2000, uh, well, 1998, when the deregulation was uh, implemented, uh, that is the, still the figure that we are using, uh, which is the 6,000, uh, 6 million, I mean, 6 million cylinders in circulation are the, uh, the unsafe, so-called unsafe. These are the generic. Until now, that is the figure that we are using. But uh, maybe the DOE uh, in their fieldwork can maybe justify that uh, less and less uh, generic cylinders will be seen in the market because it's been now uh, 20 plus years. Many of those cylinders was already scrapped uh, and uh, many independent uh, refillers and players in the industry start to um, infuse new cylinders uh, bought on the accredited manufacturers like the existing two or three manufacturers and importers in the country, uh, I believe it will correct by itself by uh, policing or by the industry participant doing their uh, responsibility. As of now, marami naman sa aming mga independent uh, players ngayon ang nagpalit ng uh, pag-iisip tungkol sa pag, uh, nung panahon na ayaw namin iakuin yung responsibilidad na yan. Marami na rin naman sa amin ang uh, na, nagbago ang pag-iisip na akuin na yung responsibilidad sa pag-aayos ng mga tangkili. But uh, ilan, out of the 6 million, ilan in uh, ilan ang branded at ilan ang uh, generic out of the total? No? I just want to see how much, what is the ratio between generic versus branded? When the deregulation started, we can safely say that it's 90% branded and 10% are generic. And the rest are, are really generic in the market during that time. But 22 years has passed. So ngayon po ang uh, pananaw na, or 24 years has passed. Now, sa pananaw po namin, uh, between the branded and the, and the independent brand in circulation, there are... are maybe 60-40, 60% belongs to the branded cylinders and 40% belong to the independent brand, registered independent brand. And when you will be uh, looking at the estimate uh, percentage on the 40% of the independent brand that is a generic, probably out of the 40%, it's around uh, 20% of the 40% will be generic. That in the past, in the coming years, mawawala din naman po yan dahil sa the consumer right now because of the continuous uh, promotion of the DOE, DTI, reminding consumer of the using uh, a better cylinder quality. Eh, tinatumatanggap na rin naman ho ang mga consumer to patronize uh, those cylinders that they feel that uh, look like uh, unsafe in the market. Thank you. Thank you, Kong Arnel. Thank you for that. In for, for, uh, thank you for those insights. Um, DT, DOTR, Yusek Ruben Reynoso, any, any comments po? Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman or Mr. Uh, Senator. Yes, uh, the DOTR has always been in support of the uh, use of uh, LPG as uh, alternative fuel for uh, motor vehicles. As a matter of 
LPG as an alternative fuel since 2005. And uh, we continue to support the uh, use of LPG as an alternative fuel, not only because of its uh, health benefits due to lower pollution as a result of reduction of emission, but also because of the uh, comparative cost vis-a-vis -vis the other fuels such as diesel or petrol. Now, uh, as I uh, earlier manifested by the uh, Mr. Yao of the LPG industry, that uh, the OTR has no capability to uh, prescribe you know, regulation on the uh, transport of LPG, okay. we do welcome the offer of the industry to assist the DOTR in coming up with a, uh, with a uh, regulation on the uh, transport of uh, LPG you know, from uh, one side to another side. And definitely, we will we will consult the uh, the industry, you know, because uh, if uh, we are mandated by the bill or by the law when enacted, the, we will definitely be uh, undertaking consultation before any regulation is implemented by uh, the DOTR. That's all, Mr. Chair. Thank you, thank you, Sec. Um, we we'll call on BFP, represented by Superintendent Cesar. Patricio. And then put on BFP. Mr. Patricio, Superintendent Patricio. Wala ba? No, wala. Um, PMP. Represented by uh, Police Major General Emmanuel Likup. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chair. Morning, uh, sir. To the honorable uh, members of the committee, uh, I am representing the PNP. I would like to uh, make a short comment, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, regarding our uh, efforts at the PNP. Uh, the PNP, to all the all those who are here, uh, let me also greet them, Mr. Chair, to our uh, special guest and from the LPG industry. Uh, the, the PNP fully supports the initiative of the Senate Committee on Energy and the Committee on Trade, Commerce, and Entrepreneurship to tackle the national energy policy and regulatory framework of the Philippine liquefied uh, petroleum gas industry. The role of the PNP as the lead uh, law enforcement agency of the land and under Section 3A of the Batas Pamansa uh, Bilang uh, Tatlopong Tatlo, as amended by PD 1865, explicitly provides that all enforcement, law enforcement and uh, concerned agencies of government shall assist the Bureau of Ener Energy in the implementation of the section. Based on the PNP operational procedure, however, police assistance will only be provided when the requirements for the police assistance in the implementation of final decisions or orders or resolutions of courts in civil cases of uh, quasi-judicial bodies and of administrative bodies, except for cases, of course, with uh, issued temporary restraining order or injunction. The PNP commends the intention of the Senate in crafting the legislation for the national energy policy and regulatory framework the Philippine liquefied petroleum gas industry. Uh, with that, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, we thank the members of the Senate for inviting us today in this uh, teleconference. And again, we commit our full support on this measure and further to the LPG uh, industry. If you, if you will, uh, Mr. Chair, I would like to state some of the efforts, especially uh, of, the, of the Criminal Investigation Detective uh, Management uh, Group, or CIDG, on some of their uh, accomplishments uh, regarding the campaign against uh, illegal refinery manufacturing of uh, LPG. <clears throat> For uh, uh, the year 2020, uh, they call this uh, Oplan uh, Ligas uh, 2020. 
for 2020 up to uh, from January up to uh, May 17 of this year, they have uh, conducted a total of 100 operations, and they were able to arrest uh, 153, and uh, uh, 83 cases were already filed. It uh, involved a uh, an amount of uh, 1.3 million uh, LPG products. For uh, 2019, uh, for the whole year, uh, the CADG, under their uh, Anti-Fraud and Commercial Crimes Division, has conducted uh, 365 operations against uh, illegal refinery and illegal manufacturing of LPG. And they were able to arrest uh, 465 personalities. And of course, uh, they have filed um, 303 uh, cases uh, in court, uh, involving an amount of 5.7 million uh, worth of uh, LPG products. Uh, Mr. Chair, that's our humble uh, contribution to the effort of uh, uh, the LPG industry and to the regulatory uh, bodies of uh, this industry. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, thank you, uh, thank you, sir. Uh, sir, pa submit po sa amin ni mga data. Uh, those yes. data, those information is quite uh, uh, important for us to put everything into context. So uh, please submit to the committee those uh, figures that you mentioned earlier. Um, the next will be DILG, represented by Miss Annalisa Bonagua. Bonagua. Um, good morning, Mr. Chair, Senator Gachalian, and to the Senators present, Senator Marcos and Senator Dinay. Uh, uh, thank you, Chair. I am Director Ana Bonagua, rep representing uh, USEC RJ, RJ Echeverry of the DILG. Um, we would like to inform this Honorable Committee that the DILG is in full support of the enactment of this measure uh, on the implementation of the regulatory policies and measures on the, of the LPG industry. In fact, um, the DILG has issued already several policy guidelines for local government units in the past on the regulation of the industry since 2004. So we have two uh, DILG Memorandum Circular 2004-113 uh, on the regular inspection of gasoline station operating in the respective jurisdiction of the local government units. Um, DILG Memorandum Circular 2006-66 prescribing um, safety measure in all gasoline station in cities and municipalities. And the last one, uh, particularly on the LPG industry, uh, DILC Memorandum Circular 2006-95 Guidelines for Task Force LPG in Local Government Units. Um, on the proposed uh, measure, uh, we noted that also the DILC has been also included as uh, one of the uh, involved agency. Uh, the DILG have prepared and submitted uh, our inputs and comments. I hope it has already reached the committee. And I would like to mention some of the more important comments and inputs in support of the enactment of the proposed measure. Uh, first, uh, Honorable Chair, uh, whenever there is an intention to include the violation of policies and regulatory measure on the proposed enactment, among the grounds on the issue one suspension revocation of business permit and licenses issued by local government units um, the dilg suggests that an express provision thereon should be included particularly stating uh, the violation thereof be on the ground for revocation of the permits we respectfully note that as provided for under the local government code of 1991 specifically section 444, which provides that the LCE, the local chief executive, shall suspend, uh, revoke licenses and permits for any violation of the condition upon which said licenses and permits have been issued pursuant to law or ordinance. Thus, uh, the local government is precluded to include any grounds for non-issue ones and revocation of the permit in the relevant uh, implementing guidelines of the business permit without any local legislative enactment as legal basis to support the same. 
So it cannot just be um, revoked by the local chief executive just on their wishes, but it should be supported by local ordinances. Um, second, uh, Mr. Chair, in Section 10B, it was stated that the LGUs shall suspend, revoke upon due notice and hearing the business permit or license of an LPG industry participant upon issuance by the DOE of a notice of suspension of revoc or revocation of to Section 6 of this Act. Uh, on the other hand, Section 18 uh, states that all LPG industry participants shall conduct business only with LPG industry participants with valid uh, license to operate for specific activity they're engaged. Therefore, Mr. Chair, it is possible that the license to operate of an LPG industry participant is suspended, yet it is still has a valid business permit or mayor's permit since it has indicated in Or revoke its business and or mayor's permit. So yeah, Mr. Chair, and then uh, there are some few minor um, uh, inputs, recommendations that we would like to mention, uh, particularly Section 6I and Section 7F of Chapter 2. Uh, there is a mention of the role of DOE and uh, uh, DOE and DTI. Uh, respectively to undertake with DILG on regarding the information, education, and communication campaigns on the health, safety, security, and environment, and quality standards for LPG, LPG pressure vessel, and LPG vehicles. Um, it is un understood that the DILG's role will be on the information dissemination campaign, while the te technical aspect of the inf information campaign will be undertaken by the, the DOE having uh, the expertise and the technical expertise on the matter. Uh, another one, Mr. Chair, um, with Director, Mr. Chair, yes, uh, Director, yes, yes, sir. Yes. Yes. Director Banagua, naririnig niyo ako? Yes. Yes, sir. Ako naririnig. Sa Mr. Chair. Wala na. Thank you. 
Sir, itu mana Reiser Mister? Para nai kita Reiser. Ya, ini semuanya yang apa? Kan, dah lepas ya. Yes, sir. Director Bonagua. Hello, Mr. Chair. Yes, po. Kaki ulit po from the portion ng sinabi niyo in express provision. Um, which one po, Mr. Chair? Hello. Doon sa revocation ng business permit. Okay po. Um, with regards to the provision, yung first two, sir, um, uh, the revocation of the business permit, um, uh, we would like to mention that whenever there are mention of the revocation of the business permit, we would like uh, to specifically mention the provision of the local government. Or we would like to note that the uh, the uh, the inclusion of the specific provision on um, uh, the local government code, particularly section 444, which provides that the LCE shall suspend or revoke licenses and permits for any violation of conditions upon which said license or permit has been issued pursuant to law or ordinance. So there should be the pursuant to law or ordinance. Therefore, this preclude the local chief executives on just um, uh, revoking permits which, uh, without any local legal legislative enactment as legal basis. Um, uh, Hello, Mr. Chair. Hello, sir. Ito tayo. Itong ulang mic. Mr. Chair, wawala na. Director? Yes, sir. I can hear you, sir. Uh, Director, pasensya na. Naririnig niyo ako? Yes, sir. I can hear you. Okay. Pati submit na lang ho sa amin yung position paper kanina. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We will do submit the official position paper of the DILG. Uh, pasensya na. We had technical problems. So, to save time and for not uh, uh, repeating yourself, submit na lang po sa amin position paper. Yes, sir. We will do so, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we call on uh, BFP, represented by Superintendent Patricio. Yes, sir. Uh, good morning, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, and also to other senators present in this meeting, members of the uh, LPG committee, uh, LPG associations, and other government agencies present in this meeting. So, Mr. Chair, narinig po ba ako? Narinig ko. So, can I continue, Mr. Chair? Yes, go ahead. Uh, uh, with regards to our agency, Mr. Chair, we are very supportive on this bill, and we also support with the uh, recommendation of former Congressman Arnold P. on to create a technical working group so that it would harmonize necessary documents as well as the standards that every agency should implement. And I would like also uh, inform the committee that our agency is implementing is using the LPG 58, which is the LPG gas code and the LPG form, which is the national gas code, and other specific requirements in accordance to our revised implementing rules and regulations of RE 9514, which is the part uh, code of the Philippines. Uh, also, we also support, we also support 
the recommendation for consumer to establish a one-stop shop or is a simplification of the procedures in uh, getting the uh, permit requirement, Mr. Chair. Sir, may tanong ako. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Gusto ko malaman ilan ang sunog na nangyari for the last five years due to LPG. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, based on our records on uh, LPG-related fire incident from uh, 20, 20, 2010 to up to present, uh, January up to present, April 2020, sir, uh, we have 1,139 fire incident. Ulitin ko po, sir. Ulitin ko po. Uh, from 2010 up to April 2020, we have a total LPG-related fire incident of 1,130. So ano ang uh, dahilan kung bakit ho nagkaroon ng sunog? Uh, uh, based on our answer, sir, based on our records, uh, ang common po na dahilan ng sunog is uh, we have apat po na ano po, apat na factors. We have the LPG explosion caused by defective tank. Sa po yan, sir. Then uh, caused by defective hose line and defective uh, tube and defective regulator and also sir uh, it is caused by uh, due to leaking that cause uh, uh, electri uh, static electricity or spark so yun yung mga common sir na mga sunog namin in terms of lpg normally to sir sa mga bahay po to siya sa household po to nangyayari <laughs> Uh, ilan, po, ilan po doon na due to defective tank? Uh, sir, dito sa records namin, sir, uh, hindi namin na-specify kung ilan to, sir, no? Kasi ang, ang, ang binigay lang po sa akin ngayon, sir, is uh, yung total lang, total lang po talaga, sir. Total lang po talaga. Ang total number of mga incident related. Pero yung nag-specify lang kami dito, Ano, ano yung mga uh, posibleng dahilan ng sunog na to. Maybe sir, I could... Uh, okay, sir, sir, pa uh, pasabit na lang yung uh, breakdown. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We will stop. Uh, we need the breakdown for the last years. And then pasabit yes, po yung position yes, paper nyo kanina. Ah uh, yes sir, okay. Yes sir. Give it some Thank you sir. So everyone, let's take a 5 minute break. We'll just fix the technical issues. Okay sir. Okay sir.
Test mic. Test mic one, two, three. 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 You, one consumer. Test mic one, two, three. Session is, uh, hearing is resumed. Nakamute. Hearing is resumed. Naririnig niyo po ako? Can you hear me? Yes, Mr. Chair. Can hear. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we now call on uh, Governor Dax Kua of ULAP. Governor Dax. Governor Dax. You're now recognized. Nakamute si the governor. Yan. Governor Dax? Can you hear us? Governor? He's not yet ready. Uh, we'll call on Attorney Dimagiba of Laban Consumer. Attorney Dimagiba. Hi, good morning, Mr. Chairman. Yes, Attorney, any comments po regarding uh, the LPG bill? Okay, uh, kung uh, LPG bill had been uh, pending sa past Congress, we have observed na marami na rin po mga ibang batas na ipasa that would impact directly on the bill as present, presented. Kapo, pwedeng reviewin yung bill, make it simpler, shorter. Yung pong ibang mga provisions na hakop na ng ibang special law, eh pwede na rin po natin huwag ulitin ulit. Na? Very clearly, yung pong ARTA, Anti-Red Tape Authority, of doing business, takot po niya lahat eh, industry sector at ng mga regulatory functions. I'm sure ang DPI, ang DOE, ang DALG, submit na po ng kanilang mga approved citizen charter doon sa mga mandato nila. So yung po mga yun, let's pretty take it out from the coverage of the bill. Nalawa po, Kung sa safety and standards ng mga cylinders, uh, being a former USEC ng DTI, I can also affirm and confirm na ang DTI po ay extensive product standards when it comes to LPG cylinder. In fact, uh, one of the products po yan na under mandatory certification. Ibig po sabihin yan, ikaw ay local manufacturer or ikaw ay nag import cilindro ay dadaan ka sa certification and import process and testing ng cylinder na gagawin mo based on standards. 
So baka po yun, pwede na rin tanggalin sa coverage ng bill. Pangatlo po, yung mga issues on uh, illegal price manipulation, issues on competition, market behavior, meron na rin po tayong batas doon, yung creation ng Philippine Competition Commission. Kumbaga, meron bang magkiklaim na kartel itong LPG business? Pwede po silang pumunta sa Competition Commission. Kaya lang po sa bill na to. In other words, meron po mga picture and bill na ulit-ulit po nadi-discuss at remains an issue as I heard the resource persons earlier called number one po. Hindi po talaga settled yan brand ownership eh ng LPG when it is already in the hand of the consumer. Kasi eh, pwede ba niyang iswap yan kung compatible yung regulator niya with another brand. May mga things na ganun. Second po, yung, yung issue ng swapping of cylinder ng industry players, kailangan na din pong, nandiyan po sa batas yan eh, kailangan din pong maliwanag kasi dyan wala pong clear guidelines whether ang DOE o DTI sa mga issues na yan. Yung hindi ko pa napansin kung nandiyan nandin pa din po yung pondo eh. May, supposed to be may pondo na i-establish para gamitin pong uh, research and development to improve the industry. So Mr. Chairman, just want to share to you, maski na walang batas sa yung ganyan bill, yung pong cylinder na ginagamit ko ngayon sa bahay, hindi ko na po babanggitin ng brand. Alam nyo, nagkaroon siya ng bagong safety feature. If you notice, Dati po ang silindro, bilog yung kanyang top, hindi po ba? Bilog, yung close circle. And then, ipapasok mo yung regulator under it. Minsan po, ang hirap-hirap gawin nun. So ngayon, meron po lumabas na kinat nila yung ring. Kinat nila yung ring, I guess siguro mga one-third or one-fourth the size of the ring. Now you can easily unplug or remove yung bulb if you change the cylinder. Sa akin po magandang safety feature yun. Uh, yung leakage, may iwasan mo kasi ang dali na yun. Baka ako, mas kina ako, senior citizen. I can do it now myself freely, one click. No? So mga ganun po, baka itanggalin na po natin sa coverage ng batas yun. Okay. So let's just limit to areas that would address additional safety standards will also protect consumer. And then we can have a leaner bill. Baka isa po yan reason, bakit sabi ni Madam Mercy, seven congress na, so that's 21 years. Eh, kasing idat po niya yung competition law. At saka yung, yung consumer act, eh, siya, hindi pa siya nagiging batas. Yung lamang po, yung pag we're ready to sit. No? We're ready to sit if, if, if you will create a TWG to make the bill, proposed bill, simpler and address kung ano yung mga areas po na uh, hindi pa nakukover ng any existing regulation. Lastly po, lesson learned from COVID-19. Ang laki talaga po role ng DILG, particularly ng mga barangay. Nakita po natin yan and we felt it. We saw it and we felt it. Sila po talagang pwedeng gawing guardian eh sa pagpapatupad niyang mga bata sa LPG at the barangay level, kapit-bahay po nila yung ilalibo na pala yung retail output niya. Nagulat ako sa statistics ni Director Abad eh. Very big number already engaged in this business. Yung lamang po, maraming salamat sa invitasyon, Senator. Thank you. Thank you, Attorney. Um, thank, you for, thank you po for your comments and uh, uh, we will um, we'll take note of your uh, suggestions. Um, we call Governor Kua, Dax. Governor 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 Dax. Um, we have already submitted our position paper and um, we're supportive of the bills filed in the Senate, uh, Senator. 
Uh, maganda naman na uh, the twin objectives of um, safety and at the same time consumer protection. And uh, finally, of course, um, streamlining for ease of doing business. Uh, we do admit um, and we do um, resonate with the idea na LGUs, especially those um, uh, lower classification LGUs, need a lot of technical uh, and capacity building assistance. And uh, sana po uh, may sama yun, yung mga assistance to LGUs para mat mat marunong naman kaming mag-effectively uh, manage. And maybe lang maiwasan lang, um, Senator, yung ano po, yung baka magkaroon ng overlap in regulation. Um, like yung sa mga fire code, uh, building code na national and both local um, check and uh, implement at the same time, sana maiwasan lang. So, kung LGU, LGU talaga. Kung national, national talaga. But we are more than willing to work with um, uh, DOE and the line agencies of DILG, of course. And uh, congratulations, Senator. Maganda, maganda yung initiative. Governor, any comments regarding uh, giving uh, responsibilities to the mayors? Because talagang itong bill, without the LGU support, uh, it's virtually almost impossible to implement because we know for a fact that refillers, uh, dealers on the ground, yan ang dami. No? Especially refiller, refillers. No? In fact, sa Valenzuela, marami kaming mga refillers doon. I uh, remember when I was a mayor, I had to deal with uh, uh, a few re refillers who sa aming lunsod. But uh, right now with the bill, it's formalizing the responsibility of the LGUs. And in fact, it's giving some portion of the penalties so that the LGUs will have uh, some financial um, capability in, kung, kung mayroong mga inspection or kung mayroong mga confiscation. Ngayon, wala kasi. It's purely LGU. No? Any comments on that, giving more responsibilities to the LGUs? Um, uh, we, we do agree that, um, sa tingin ko, Senator, welcome naman yun. Um, Kasi sa totoo lang, DOE has uh, limited presence usually in the regional or maybe less than regional pa nga yung presence ng DOE. So talagang nahihirapan. And LGUs are really in the position to implement, siguro in coordination with the national agencies, um, we can do some sort of collaborative effort na at a certain stage ipapasa na sa national. Um, and yes, we welcome the sharing of the fees. Kasi sa totoo lang, pagka nasunugan ng bahay, eh, binibigyan ng mayor yan ng, ng tulong para makarebuild ng buhay at ng bahay. So at least meron tayong pagkukunan. Hindi lang yung para sa operations, pero para din dun sa mga uh, na-aksidente, na-aksidente ng mga unfortunate incidents. So um, uh, I think it's, uh, it's manageable. Uh, yun lang talaga, Senator. Uh, kay kailangan siguro namin ng technical and capacity building assistance. Thank you. Thank you, Gov. Thank you for the support and thank you for your comment. Maraming salamat. Um, I have, thank you. I have some questions to DOE. Uh, Director Abad. Um, Director Abad. Hi. Yes, sir. Uh, since ang DOE is the main implementer of the policies regarding LPG no? uh, right now. Uh, what are the gaps that you see in the implementation of these circulars and policies? No? Right now, kasi the whole LPG industry is being regulated through circulars. Ano yung mga gaps na nakita nyo? Ano yung mga nakikita yung gaps that we should address through law? Uh... Uh, unang una, sir, uh, uh, let, let's divide the main discussion on the important parts of the LPG operation. Uh, it's correct, may problema tayo sa LPG cylinder uh, because of the fact that, that uh, per the requirements in the PNS, uh, dapat po lahat ng uh, cylinder sa market mayroon pong PS mark at saka ICC. So that, that guarantees na yung nandun sa uh, market ay uh, 
clear na na on standard dahil dumaan siya dun sa uh, mandatory uh, safety uh, pros, uh, qualification ng BPS. Uh, madali po sa amin uh, mag-implement ng con confiscation by simply uh, requiring the the players to, to to show us the PS mark and ICC. Pag wala po yun, mabilis sana sa amin. So, ma madali po yan. Uh, so, dun po sa facility naman, uh, uh, the challenge po, uh, Mr. Chair of the DOE, and uh, we recognize that, uh, is to specify and delineate among the different agencies the respective standard to, to which agency will, will a specific provision in the PNS belongs. Kasi ang, ang problema dun sa PNS, sir, halo po ito, uh, may provision na nandun sa Bureau of Fire, uh, may provision na kay DTI, may provision na para sa DOE. So uh, what we will do is to attempt, uh, yan na po ang direction ng OIMB, i-attempt po namin i-delineate ang amin and then we will go back to the technical committee to confirm the, the list. Uh, Kasi ang kulang po ngayon sa regulation, ang nandun ay puro prohibitive act, prohibited acts, which is a very bad uh, way of uh, looking at the industry in terms of improving the operation. Parang nanghuli, nanghuli ka na, na gusto mo manghuli instead of focusing on the standards. Kasi gusto mo i-improve yung industry. So th that's the lacking part in our existing regulation. And we want, if, if I may use the percentages, gusto ko 80% po ang standards doon sa regulation. 20% na lang po ang enforcement. Now, the, the third part, sir, is the, uh, of course, the, the, the segregation between uh, the DTI, for example, who approves and circularize the PNS, and the DOE, who only waits for the D DTI to, to circularize the PNS on, on cylinders. Uh, and of course, uh, dun sa facility, hati-hati uh, po yan. So, uh, dun sa PNS, may mga pending po tayong uh, for circularization ng, ng DTI at saka ng uh, for, for the cylinder. So, hinihintay po namin yun na ma-circularize sana yun kasi uh, we mention of the canister, uh, we cannot implement daw the canister uh, in terms of uh, application because uh, wala pong circular ngayon sa canister. Uh, that, that will uh, require the PNS as a requirement para hindi po ma-approve yung mga aplikante na hindi sumusunod dun sa PNS. Uh, however, as long as the PNS is not circularized, it remains to be voluntary. So yun po yung, ang gusto namin, Mr. Chair, sana is, uh, I think for now I am very confident that the existing law is workable, is already workable if we can incorporate 80% of the standards doon sa DOE regulation. But of course, the, the, the more improved uh, Senate bill now will even more improve the, the regulation of the industry. Ang sinasabi po namin is, pag mai, ma, magawa namin tong 80% na standards ang nandun sa loob ng regulation, uh, we will see uh, a, a drastic improvement doon sa regulation. Uh, not necessarily dahil pa sa bill na to. But of course, uh, we will follow the same approach pag na, napasa po itong bill na to into, into a law. Mr. Chair. Uh, the Director, ano yung mga nakita niyong standards that should be included in the law itself? Uh, we, what we did in the law is, uh, in fact, uh, just full disclosure, this law is uh, patterned after the many laws that were filed in the past. No, we just made a lot of improvements, but uh, more or less, it's patterned to many, many of the laws that were filed, even even during the 11th Congress. 
but ano bang nakita nyo what in, in a nutshell no in in brief ano bang mga standards na gusto nyo ipasok dito sa proposal um uh, meron po tayong standards on the different kinds of pressure vessels uh, so mula dun sa cylinder mula dun sa canister uh, at saka yung mga bulk uh, storage tank Uh, meron din tayo sa facility mga PNS that are being followed if you are putting up a refilling plant, if you are uh, a dealer, if you are a retailer. So yun po yung, in short, meron tayo sa cylinder, PNS, meron tayong sa facility, at meron din tayong gustong ipasok sa code of safety practice. Kasi ngayon, uh, it's just a code. Hindi pa siya PNS, all the more na hindi pa siya circularized. Again, it runs down to the fact that it becomes voluntary. And then, um, okay, I don't think we should put the exact technical specifications in the law, but we will uh, uh, put in the law the exact documents that should be promulgated and who will promulgate it. But are very clear and we need your help in terms of delineating the responsibilities between departments as you mentioned so it will be very clear among departments uh who should do what yes mr chair and then director ano ang nakikita niyo mga major problems ng industriya um sir ang ang sabi pa nga natin uh Uh, doon po sa pinakamalaking mga violation ay yung hindi po kumukuha ng certificate of compliance. Uh, well, the certificate of compliance by the word itself, you need to comply the requirements that, that is supposed to be uh, kinuha doon sa PNS. Yun po yung uh, kailangan ma, 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 maintindihan nung, nung applicant. Uh, And there seems to be some kind of uh, miscommunication pa, if, if I may use the word. Kasi nabibigyan po sila ng business permit to operate. So meron ding kailangang uh, coordination with the LGU. Uh, so uh, dun po, uh, uh, the problem Mr. Chair is uh, nahihirapan din po kami pumunta kay LGU because the regulation itself Uh, lacks largely the specified standards for a facility. Uh, yun ang problema eh. If, if for example, if we want to uh, uh, evaluate a, a refilling plant, ang, ang gusto natin makita yung list of criteria, yung 1 to 20 na kailangan ng isang refilling plant so that that re requirements or regulation may also be adapted by the LGU into an ordinance kasi hindi niya maikabit doon sa pag approve or disapprove ng business permit kung hindi sasamahan ng local ordinance. So uh, I think the, the, the important first step is for the DOE to segregate those criteria for per facility and then pa isasama na na po namin sa sunod yung LGU so that they can adapt it as a local ordinance para pariho na po ang requirements ng business permit at saka ng certificate of compliance ng DOE. Pero, Director, mahirap yun dahil we're talking about 100, oh, 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 sorry, we're talking about 1,500 plus LGUs, big and small. If you will require them or you will request an ordinance from all of them, that will take you a long, long time. So my proposal really, I think you're right in a, in a way that we should have standards and those standards should be uh, the ones that should govern uh, the LPG industry. When I say LPG industry, laptop from refilling to the others. And then anything below that standard uh, should be uh, known to the LGUs. So that hindi sila magbibigay ng permit or engineering permits. Um, dahil uh, nangyayari yan, example nga sa Valenzuela na mention ko sa inyo, um, hindi na namin inaantay yung DOE compliance certificate. Eh. 
Sa pit sila ng plano, mas binigyan ng building official ng building permit, meron na yung business permit eh. Uh, hindi namin alam. Nalalaman na lang namin yan pag nagre-read ng DOE. And DOE will uh, ask the LGU to uh, for assistance. Yan, nangyayari yan. So there must be a mechanism wherein it's not red tape, no? hindi siya bureaucratic, uh, that the LGUs will be guided accordingly. Sabi nga ni Gov kanina, will be trained and guiding, guided accordingly. And that will be the basis for them to give building permits only in, in, only in so far as LPG industries concern. Admitted uh, talaga hindi, hindi lahat ng LJUs uh, and building officials kabisado kung ano yung requirements ng DOE when it comes to the LPG facilities. We can embed that in the law so that uh, ang aking guiding principles dapat hindi bureaucratic and uh, it should be uh, mabilis para hindi naman maipit yung mga honest na negosyante. Yes, Mr. Uh, we, we agree that, that uh, uh, the end goal, if the end goal is to align the business permit requirements with that of the DOE requirements based on one single document, which is the Philippine National Standard, uh, kung ano man po ang mode na mas mabilis, we will support. Um, Mr. Chair? Yes. You uh, said? Mr. Chair, yes, Mr. Chair, if I may intervene. Yes, go uh, ahead. In connection, in connection what direct, with what the director has been saying, maybe, Mr. Chair, we can also ask the local government units uh, that before they issue any business permit, they would require uh, their certification issued by the Bureau of Philippine Standards as to uh, the compliance on our PNSs, sir. That can be another option if uh, the DOE and the PNS can guarantee the, uh, uh, the quick issuance or the fast issuance of these uh, certifications. Because another issue that I can see is, uh, for example, in the provinces, uh, gusto nila magtayo ng facility doon, refilling or others. Um, it might take time to get all of those certifications in Manila. So what's going to happen now, in practice, no, I know this for a fact, they will submit all of their engineering requirements to the building official. When they see the building official compliant to, in their, in, under the building code, they will be given the building permit and the business permit. But that, that doesn't mean that they're compliant with the standards and with the DOE compliance um, requirements. So there's a gap there eh, that we can... Uh, probably addressed in the law. No? But it's possible, uh, Yusek. It's possible also. Yes, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you. And then, Director Rino, kasi nakita ko dito, almost 60% nung kanyong inspection, puro violation. And majority of the violation is uh, non-compliance. No? Yes, Mr. Chair. But why is it... Uh, uh, but ang nangyayari dito, I'm sure the LPG industry knows about the compliance processes. How come they still operate without the SEC? Well, yan nga po yung sinasabi namin, sir, sa challenges that, uh, again, uh, mentioned also by Kong, former Kong T, that uh, uh, with the numbers that I have shown in the last slide, na umaabot po ng 20,000 or even more, baka 25,000 pa, uh, kailangan po talagang magtulungan na kasi hindi po kakayanin ng, ng OIMB to, to tackle those numbers. Uh, uh, and, and the reason na kailangan din natin ng LGU, including the DTI, kasi uh, uh, localized po ang doing business eh. So, uh, sila po ang uh, sabi pa natin is expander natin in terms of the manpower uh, requirements for the regulation on, on the safety uh, side. So, uh, tama po yan. Uh, I, I think the law should include uh, itong mga agency para po ma-expand ma po yung yung uh, kamay ng regulation uh, with the help of of the LGUs. Any reaction from the LPG industry regarding 
uh, the violation. Nakita ko kasi sa presentation ng DOE that 60% of those they inspected are without uh, SCC. So any any reaction to the LPG industry? First of all, kung totoo ito, no? Pangalawa, kung totoo man, bakit nag bakit ganun? Ano ang nagiging dahilan? Any reaction? Sir, Kung, yeah. you, uh, or, uh, any anyone from the industry? Sir, yeah. Yes, go ahead po. Well, regarding sa uh, violation of uh, no SEC, uh, probably majority of those are the retail outlets or mm -hmm. the leaders. Kasi ho, paramihan naman ho talaga sa retail outlets and leaders are multi-product. Ito po yung general merchandise. And uh, one of the requirements is the supply agreement from their supplier. Now, um, if they are getting their product from a accredited retailer, then probably there's no problem of giving them a supply agreement. But uh, if they are um, getting their product in multiple areas or in multiple suppliers, that some of them is not registered with the DOE, then they cannot give them a uh, supply agreement. Then that's one of the reasons that SCC will be issued is for a uh, business uh, establishment to provide a supply agreement uh, where they can source, where they are sourcing their LPG. Yun po yung tingin kong, uh, uh, problema. And uh, maganda naman yung requirement ng DOE doon dahil para lang ma-monitor sino ang nagsusupply so that they can uh, pinpoint who will be the responsible responsible once there's an accident happen at kung kaninong tangke po yung uh, nag-cause ng accident. Uh, kung Arnel, what do you think should 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 we do no um, in the law that so that we will uh, improve the compliance of the players because we don't want 60% of all violations 60% uh, of all inspected are violations. Uh, there, there, there's something wrong, eh? and uh, since we're now making a law, how do we address this? What we want is full compliance. Well, um, issue ho naman dito by not uh, pinpointing responsible uh, responsibility to any uh, agencies, but uh, number one is uh, sa barangay level. Uh, the barangay uh, permit sometimes uh, considered na ng mga uh, business establishment, especially maliliit, as already a business permit, which is mali naman po talaga yun. So probably yun pong uh, uh, pagtuturo ho ng uh, barangay level na sabihin o asistahan sila. Kasi uh, marami kami na-encounter na tinatamad ho ang isang uh, general merchandise na pag nakakuha no, sila ng barangay permit, kasi yun naman hindi na malulusutan yun. Talagang kailangan nilang mag-apply ng barangay permit. Pero hanggang doon na lang po sila hindi na sila pumupunta sa munisipyo para mag-apply ng business permit kasi maaari tinatamad o maaari pananaw nila napakaliit naman ng negosyo to para gumastos pa muli pag apply ng mga permits. Yun po yung karamihan sa mga nagbabiolate na walang SCC dahil mula pa lang sa umpisa, wala na silang permit from the munisipyo. Thank you, Kong Arnel. Well, well, uh, if, uh, if I can add some comments lang regarding on the discussion with uh, uh, the comment of Attorney Abad uh, yeah. regarding the ones uh, power that will be given to uh, the DOE uh, on the uh, uh, permit to operate before the construction begins. Uh, the reason why I um, um, well object to uh, this uh, uh, proposal it's because we encounter issues like, for example, the issue of Petronas, a multinational company in Cebu, uh, who is the who built his terminal. And after how many years of operation, uh, even though they have a permit uh, coming from the LGU, and then suddenly a uh, a uh, uh, opinion was given that. Uh, uh, the safety distance of his storage tank is not compliance with the international standard. Ibig sabihin no, nakapag-issue ang uh, munisipyo, yung building official na issuehan ng Bureau of Fire 
naisyuhan ng uh, SCC ng uh, gobyerno, ng DOE, and then suddenly, eh, bigla hong question after how many years of, sir, uh, of operation. Ibig sabihin, kailangan ho tama naman yung nababanggit ni Atty. Abad, i-identify na po natin kung sino talaga ang mag issue ng uh, permit when it comes to building permits. Kasi sa pananaw ko naman po, uh, hindi naman sa minamaliit po ang kakayahan ng uh, DOE, wala po sa kanilang uh, uh, expertise ang pag uh, pagtingin po ng uh, building plans, ng isang refilling plan. Because, like for example, Petronas is a multinational company from Malaysia. They base it on the standard building uh, law that uh, they base it on their, on their terminal design. And then, sa ngayon, hanggang ngayon, may problema sila. Kaya nga, ang uh, issue nila is um, they insist on their, um, on their rights that uh, they follow the international building uh, law. Eh, yun pa ho ang nagiging problema just because many government agencies doesn't align on their uh, design or interpretation of an international building. Yun lang ho naman ang problema. Thank you. Thank you, uh, uh, Congressman Arnel. And um, we also invited other government agencies uh, to share their thoughts. Uh, I won't go through one by one. Um, Medyo marami ho sila, but uh, I would like to uh, solicit some comments if kung meron ho silang comments um, regarding the bill or regarding the topic on hand. So any any from anyone from the government agencies that we uh, invited, uh, anyone uh, would like to comment? Mr. Chair from MMDA. Yes, Ray. Yes, Hi. go ahead. Magandang umaga po, uh, Chair at sa lahat ng participants uh, during this morning's public hearing. Uh, we have submitted our position paper over the weekend and uh, we are very uh, grateful for the opportunity to participate in the public hearing. And based on all of the discussions uh, since very early this morning, uh, I'm, I'm glad to mention that uh, most of the things that we have written down in our position paper have been uh, made more relevant uh, and uh, confirmed some of the things, some of our concerns uh, on the bill. And first and foremost, Mr. Chair, the MMDA strongly supports the immediate passage of the proposed uh, Senate Bill Number 1188, sponsored by the good Senator Sherwin Tigachelian. However, uh, as I, I mentioned earlier, there are certain uh, provisions of the bill that we would like to take exception on, particularly as it relates to compliance, to ensure compliance to MMD, MMDA mandates, particularly on public safety, transport and traffic management, health and sanitation, zoning and land use, among others. In uh, Section 28 in the transport of conveyance of LPG from lines 9 to 27. Uh, aside from the certificate of roadworthiness issued by the LTO, as mentioned in the in the law, uh, which is obviously not visible from the outside of the transportation used for conveyance of LPG, the MMDA recommends that a distinctive and unified marking be issued or and placed on all LPG vehicles traversing roads and highways in Metro Manila, particularly those delivering in bulk, signifying compliance with the standards and guidelines set by the concerned local uh, uh, government agencies for quick identification. The MMDA also recommends that motorcycles and tricycles converted to deliver multiple or even single cylinders, cartridges, or canisters to end consumers be covered by the guidelines and standards by the concerned agencies in the interest of public safety and traffic and transport management. On Section 21, on the installation of LPG containers and retailing of auto LPG at dispensing stations, which is contained in Line 31, the MMDA recommends that conversion kits I repeat, conversion kits for auto LPG motor vehicles 
should all be should also be subjected to a set of guidelines to ensure the safety of the drivers and passengers in consideration of past accidents involving LPG leakage in auto LPG motor vehicles. The MMDA further recommends that the specific guidelines covering the construction and operations of auto LPG dispensing stations should include and strictly comply with the zoning ordinance of the LGUs, which prohibits locating such stations inside residential zones. Thus, the, the, localized, the locational or zoning or clearance issued by LGUs should, also, should only be granted to LPG stations and other similar facilities like gas stations to those constructed within commercial or industrial zones. On section six, uh, specifying the power and functions of the Department of Energy, the MMDA recommends that the conduct of information, education and communication or IEC activities on health, safety, security, environmental and quality standards should include the distribution of pamphlets to all end consumers focusing on the proper handling of LPG-related accidents, identification of defective and single-use cylinders, canisters, and cartridges, as well as proper handling and care of the regulatory assembly parts uh, or, the, or the connectivity of uh, the cylinders with the stoves and the LB, LPG cylinders. That's contained in uh, Section 6, la, Item I, Lines 12 to 17. On Section 17 concerning the retail outlet of LPG, in relation to the IEC activities, the retail outlet serving end consumers should be mandated not only to have printed materials and posters available within their establishments, but to directly provide each and every end consumer day service with pamphlets showing proper procedures on how to prevent and handle LPG-related accidents. That's contained in letter E and F, lines 12 to 15 of section 7. On section 26, lines 16 to 32, LPG cylinders, canisters, and cartridges declared as defective. The MMDA six clarification on the number of days from confiscation and impoundment before defective cylinders, canisters, and cartridges are disposed permanently. Uh, this is important because the second recommendation, uh, the MMDA takes notice of the absence of guidelines and procedures on the storage, impounding site, storage and disposal, as well as location for disposal of defective cylinders and canisters and cartridges. In view of this, the MMDA recommends that the appropriate guidelines and procedures be stipulated in the above mentioned section of the bill in the interest of environmental and urban protection, health and sanitation and safety. Mr. Chair, uh, again, we iterate our full support and congratulations to you for spearheading SBN number 1188, which primarily aims to protect the general public from unnecessary danger and potential loss of life, as well as undue destruction of property. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Ray. Maraming salamat. Uh, any comments from the rest of the government agencies who were invited? Anyone who wants to... Uh, Mr. Uh, Chair. Yes, you said. Mr. Chair, uh, we, have a, we have the position paper from DTI, but like I said this morning, uh, it's not yet signed by Secretary Lopez. But briefly, Mr. Chair, we can submit only five points. Uh, yes. Five comments yeah. on the draft bill. On Section 4A, Mr. Chair, uh, the department agrees with the provision designating the DTI as the agency to accredit manufacturers, requalifiers, or, or repairers of the LPG pressure vessels. We also recommend that the DTI be given the authority to enumerate the required competencies of inspection. Oh, for the This is for the inspection bodies, Mr. Chair and the methods of requalification of steel cylinders for LPG for the information of all concerned in the sector prior to application for accreditation or recognition. In Chapter 2, on the role of the government agencies, Mr. Chair, we fully support the intention of the bill delineating the specific functions of the, of the government agencies concerned. 
in order to avoid confusion and overlapping of jurisdictions amongst the identified government agencies. On Section 7, it is consistent with the mandate of DTI to establish standards and inspect products by virtue of RA 4109 or the standards law. And the department commits to the development of other pertinent standards governing the various LPG products. Uh, on Section 18, Mr. Chair, on the granting of licenses, the issuance and or granting of licenses to operate must be limited to qualified LPG retailers that sell or market LPG outside the, including those outside the subdivisions or in gasoline stations in or in residential areas, Mr. Chair, for the consideration of fire safety. And then finally, Mr. Chair, on Section 29, we respectfully recommend for a proper definition of the allowable period for consumers to refund their deposit for LPG cylinders. May we also suggest that a proper government agency be established where consumers can file complaints uh, rela related to the exorbitant pricing of LPG products. Mr. Chair, uh, the DTI uh, will welcome if this honorable body of or if the bill will include will designate DTI as this body. We will not refuse. Uh, we will accept it gladly, Mr. Chair. But we will um, we understand that if this is a Department of Energy uh, jurisdiction, it is also all right if this function is given to the Department of Energy. Uh, although I have to say that the DTI has a no wrong door policy it is an open uh, the co our work complaints mechanism is open to everybody we just make the proper endorsement for uh, particular actions to be taken by specific agencies mr chair uh, these are the comments uh, initial comments that are put forth by the department we will submit the formal uh, position paper mr chair uh, Yusek, uh, you made a good point. No? Sa ngayon, saan tumatawag ang consumers regarding, let's say, LPG um, cylinder issues or LPG issues? Uh, probably with the Department of Energy, Mr. Chair. We receive some, but there are not a lot of complaints on LPG tanks or cylinders received by the Fair Trade Enforcement Bureau. Okay, so and everything regarding LPG whether it's refilling or or to the consumer related issues it's the doe that uh, handles that uh probably mr chair because we refer also the complaints uh lodged with us to the department of energy energy okay thank you yes sir you. Uh, mr chair just one final point uh on the on the um on what uh, the director earlier mentioned on the Philippine national standards. Currently, Mr. Chair, we have five applicable standards on the liquefied petroleum gas uh, cylinders and containers or tanks. And these uh, standards, Mr. Chair, are derived from international standards um, adopted by the Bureau of Philippine Standards and promulgated as PNS, Mr. Chair, as Philippine national standards. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Yusek. Thank you, Mr. Chair. DPWH is raising their hands. Yes, yes Mr. Chairman. Yes. Um, Go ahead, Paul. Sir, um, if, if, if I may, we would like to briefly present the research and risk analysis paper that we have prepared in relation to the Section 12 of this bill, whereas the DPWH we task to prepare the guidelines on the, on the motor vehicles that we face for the okay. transport of LPG. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, go ahead, Bo. DPWH. In line with the Section 12, the, um, the, the DPWH would like to emphasize the importance of the safety in the handling and trans in the transport of the LPG during this transport process. In this point, um, nakasama po dito yung mga motor vehicles at saka yung mga tankers na ginagamit sa transport na LPG. Um, LPG, dito po sa risk analysis na to, pinagbasihan po natin yung 
mga intrinsic properties ng LPG gaya po yung flammability niya and yung energy release and then yung pressurization requirements niya with respect to temperature no environment saka no degree. And this po sa mga ito, nakapagkama po tayo ng several risk analysis na hazards sa LPG during transport. Kasama na po dito yung mga injuries na na uh, pwedeng na sa personal na nagpideliver na as well as sa uh, paligid po niya kung saan na magkakaroon ng road accidents. Um, LPG po is we all know pressurized during transport and storage and um, road accident, occurrence of road, road accidents could be catastrophic and could damage the lives and properties of the people surrounding the equipment or the motor vehicle being used for this transport. Um, um, with this po, pinapakita po natin sa part na to, yung pressurization, pressurization requirements. Ibig sabihin po, kapag habang umiinit yung environment and yung liquid na contain yung storage vessel na LPG during transport, siya po ay tumataas yung pressure, pressure niya, vapor, vapor pressure. And then, kapag tumataas po lang, mas tumataas po yung risk na magkaroon ng rupture, lalo na po kung yung mga, yung structure, no, tanke natin ng LPG ay, una, faulty design, and then luma na po siya and poorly maintained. So, it's important po na ma-emphasize na mahalaga po yung design yung tankers na ginagamit sa LP sa transport, and then yung maintainability po nila or yung capability na nagmamanage sa kanya or yung owner na organization sa kanya na makapag product ng maintenance and marami from time to time yung integrity and the reliability of the equipment. Um, dito po, uh, parts na to, kikita po natin yung mga associated na risks sa pag-handle ng LPG. Dahil pressurized po siya, and kapag narapid yung depressurized po siya, ay nag-evaporate siya at very low temperature. So, yun pa lang po, kapag may personnel or other objects na exposed po doon, pwede pong makapagtos ng severe skin or, or cold burns sa mga personnel na malapit sa kung nag-take po yung LPG ng mabilis sign. And then, at, high, at very high concentrations po, yung LPG ay possible na maging toxic sa personnel na nag as well as sa mga nasa paligid na personnel. And lastly po, yung this um, explosion or fire you pwede mag as highly explainable for your LPG and energetic shine of your substance. Ito po yung mga risk analysis na pinandak po namin in the preparation of the speaker. And pinapakita po nito yung mga factors na pwede makakapit sa uncontrolled release ng LPG. As well as yung kapag nakapag na-release na po siya yung mga possible na mangyari sa mga personnel and dun sa sa facility and other properties na nakapaligid sa kanya. And then dito po, pinapakita po natin yung mga types na mobile vehicle, motor vehicles na ginagamit yung transport ng LPG. Sama na po dito yung rigid tankers or bumping tankers, yung road tankers na trailer base, and then yung mga gas cylinder transport. Ito po yung mga nakikita natin usually na nag-carry ng LPG of various capacities like 2.7 kilograms, 5 kilograms, 11 kilograms, 22 and upwards up to 50 kilograms na LPG. So dito po, motor vehicles po silang last. So lahat po sila ay kailangan makapag-comply sa roadworthiness requirements. Dahil po itong mga pinatransport po natin sa substance ay high risk which is dahil flammable siya and pressurized. And then siya po ay Ito po ay heavy load which is mabigat po siya and possible na maging stable yung, yung handling ng, ng motor vehicle habang nasa kalsada. Yun po yung dedicated at gusto natin maiwasan. Kaya, kaya pinapropose natin sa mga guidelines na nagkaroon na certain standards na i-impose sa pag-aalaw pag ng pag-ordering ng mga delivery motor vehicles na ginagamit for entry and transport. Ito naman po yung multi diagram another tool for risk assessment na ginagamit namin sa DWH. At pinapakita po na ito yung mga, mga hazards event, hazardous na failure events 
na pwedeng mangyari habang nag-transport po siya sa karsada. For example po, yung pwedeng magkaroon ng instability yung, yung vehicle na nagkatasak niya dahil mabigat yung LPG. And then, nung tanke po niya, nag-aan pa siya ng additional risk dahil siya po ay malaking speed component, pressure vessel. So, dahil po doon, possible na kung kung hindi maganda yung handling system ng sasakyan and yung, yung safety system na nakalagay sa loob para ma-maintain yung stability na installation ng LPG cylinder doon sa equipment, sa train ng equipment or motor vehicle, siya po ay possible na makapag-balance or magtapon or makabangga po kung hindi siya ma-handle ng maayos. Pwede na madami siya mga ibang, ibang vehicle sa kalsada. Which is po yung gusto natin maliwasan sa certain things na And lahat po ngayon ay mga kapagkas ng economic losses sa part ng uh, owner ng equipment and dun sa, sa LPG na owner and then yung sa lives ng mga person and na mga, mga nasa paligid po niya. Yung other po ay yung pinapakita ko sa paper na to, yung uncontrolled vacation ng LPG protest during transports as well as normal highly pressurized yung LPG up to 800 kilopascals during room temperature. So, mabigat po siya up to 8 times no atmospheric pressure natin, which is 100 kilopascals. So, uh, Mr. Mr. Mark, paki-wrap uh, paki up na. Yes, sir. Go, ito na po. The point, if you have a, uh, ano ba yung recommendation mo? Yes, sir. So, to sum it up, sir, ang recommendation po natin okay, mag-derive ng mga safety standards and minimum na safety equipment requirements na i-install sa vehicle para po siya ay makapag-operate reliable. Gaya po ng timbang niya o yung weight ng vessel, naroon po tayong survey na, na provisions na pwede ilagay. Gaya po ng maximum weight niya na hindi dapat mag-exist sa cross vehicle weight. And pwede rin po ma-apply dito yung RAE 794 or the act imposing motor vehicle uses charge sa owners ng motor vehicles na, na nagsasaad po ng linis sa uh, weight ng mga water vehicles sa pwedeng dumaan sa kansan. And yung others po na ito ay mga standards na po na din na-raise in international standards para po sa safe operation during, during, during transport na heritage. So yun po sir, ang gusto po natin may parating po sa mga guidelines na ito ay kailangan po na magkaroon po ng magandang design and installations sa equipment na gagawin sa transport and then good maintainability and no na uh, conduct of maintenance procedures dun po sa mga ito na gagamit ng motor vehicles during transport. Yun yun lang yun yung lahat is searching and um, isa sa mga pinapagdik po namin itong paper mas ma-finalize po siya. Thank you po. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, pakisubmit na lang sa amin yung official uh, position paper ninyo. Thank you. A any comments from the other government agencies? Uh, hearing none. Um, again, thank you very much for your time. And um, before we end, let me just remind the different agencies for their submissions. Number one, to uh, DTI PSN, data on cylinders and canisters. Number two, BFP, breakdown of the causes of fires related to LPG. And number three, which is very important, the position papers, especially from DOE, DTI, and DOTR. But uh, we would like to also um, uh, get the position papers of these stakeholders, important point stakeholders, um, because you would know best how to um, improve and strengthen your industry. So um, please submit your position papers to us on or before June 4. That is next Thursday. With that, uh, again, thank you very much for your time and thank you very much for participating in this public hearing on the LPG Act. Uh, we will await for your position papers and then uh, after that, we will enter into a technical working group. So marami marami salamat po sa inyong oras. Uh, this meeting is now adjourned. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Chair.
Kamusta, Arnel? <laughs> Sa Isabela ka ba? Ah, oh, hindi. Dito lang, Manila. Eh, Baluarte ni Alan yun eh. Ayaw kong makialam doon. <laughs> dito tayo soon. Dito tayo. Oo. Oh, maganda yung office mo ha. <laughs> bahay ko to. Bahay ko to. <laughs> ano yun ba? <laughs> Hanggang bahay mo na. Busy mo. Ang daming tawag ha. Ang <laughs> daming tawag eh. Sabay-sabay. <laughs> yeah. Si Senator, wala talaga. Trabaho pa rin. Ah, na, Thank you, na, you Ernest. Thank you, Dax. Maraming salamat. Ingat, ingat, Arnel. Okay, sige. Ano lang? Ah...